Uh, I'll do it, by the way. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Minnow Cup number 13, and we have Tower Control Edition this time around. My name's Debbie, and I'm here joined by Butters. Hey, Butters, how's it going? <laughs> it's going just fine. Bit, a bit tired, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm just ready to watch some Tower Control right now. Uh, Tower Control, is it's definitely, like, there's some great moments from Tower Control. Like, it's... It's a bit like, of course, like we have the tower path that's of course already set, so it's not quite similar, as similar to Rainmaker, but oh my gosh, some of the clutch moments on checkpoints of tower control, that, that those are the hype moments. And I'm sure we're gonna get to see those uh, several times throughout today. Um, but uh, I think we're gonna get started right away here. And just so you guys know, this is Prism versus Surf and Turf. Uh, Prism, I definitely know from FNF. Uh, this past season and surf and turf i haven't seen in a good while so it's great to see them back here but let's just get right into the game on uh on anchovy games definitely a very interesting comp coming out on the side of prism running the clash blaster which is a very uncommonly seen weapon in the higher in comp matches and it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to be taking advantage of his ability to corner check people and get into better position we're going to be seeing an ink check, early ink check coming off from surf and turf finding two people and gonna allow surf and turf to take control of mid and can start contesting that tower and getting some points on them along with pulling out that ray they are really getting their specials everywhere and getting positions Oh, see, get there. Almost about to uh, dodge out that ray, but ended up uh, dodging into it instead. But Surf and Turf here with a strong start with uh, as they're like staggering their specials in here. They already got it up past the wall and they're still moving strong. We see that there is a line of Prism members waiting though for this next checkpoint to contest it. We see another Stingray coming out and just Surf and Turf, the way they're moving in right now looks really great. See, get going. Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you see that? Three go down on the side of Surf and Turf. An amazing play from the from the duelies right there. Really aggressive and really helpful right there as that allows Prism to take complete control of mid with getting, allowing the Bob ball Blobber to get a bomb rush up. Armor coming up. Inkjet's on the side of Surf and Turf to try and counter this push right now, but it isn't going to be finding many people, but it is going to stagger the push slightly. Going to be going down to the duelies who are just going off right now, going in for the third, going in for the second kill, taking a trade with the tri slasher as they team Prism takes the first checkpoint. Uh, Prism still looking. It was uh, is definitely looking strong after that triple with Seeker just going in and doing what Tetras can do best. And but uh, Surf and Turf here able to stop them before they get too far into the second checkpoint. Uh, we see Chrissy here with the try doing try things. Oh, but uh, never mind. It actually goes kind of in reverse. Prism now taking the lead, getting into that second checkpoint, um, and could probably break it here, and which they did. Clash Blaster showing the why they showing the reason why they decided to run in this on it so they can check up there up on the snipe to stop any type of backline from sitting up there and stopping them from doing pushes. The jet coming into an aggressive spot, going in for an aggressive push against the Bob Lobber in the tower. Clash Blaster is going to be taking them out, but the entirety of Prism will be traded out. Mm -hmm, and that is a yep that is a wipe on uh, prism side and we see chrissy here painting up looking for the other side getting that left side ready for the tower to come back around that corner that is something that's always good to see is having that left side prepared for when you're about to push again and look at this already the members of surf and turf coming in they pop the inkjet armor and look at how much turf control they have right now but the tower is still just coming back however seek it says i'm gonna stall this you guys are too far ahead now you gotta come right back. <laughs> Team Surf and Turf getting a bit too aggressive, forgetting about the flank, allowing the duelies to just get behind them and push that tower ever so slightly, causing the entirety of Surf and Turf to lose their flow, go two down, losing their armor right now. Make that three down is just the jet left on the Surf and Turf. Team Prism is taking this to their advantage, painting up the entirety of their plat right now. Clash Blaster coming into position. Jet Squelcher fell into arcade as rest of prism is coming in popping their armors looking to make plays right here with their specials 
Oh my goodness. I, uh, the, just dodging the ray here, so you can using the kit to its advantage here and using the, the splashdown as like a little bit of an extra dodge there with the ray still out. However, it does get picked off by this inkjet. This inkjet here has been getting, has been doing a really good job getting picks when it's popped. However, there's two members. It's a staggered two members for Surf and Turf going down and Prism is just able to seal the deal with the KO. A very good play from there from Prism. The Clash Blaster was a very interesting pick, but it ended up honestly MVPing for them right there because it <laughs> completely stopped that Jet Squelch from even remotely thinking about doing any type of raise or getting up onto any type of snipes. Really good plays from Team Prism right now, and it's going to be very interesting to see what type of comp they're going to be bringing into Muscle Forward and if they're going to be bringing that Clash Blaster back with them. Mm, I think the Clash could probably uh, still stay here just knowing kind of how Prism is. The three common weapons from that team are the Clash, the Blob, and the Tetras. It's the it's kind of the in the middle one that may change up. However, uh, for Surf and Turf, I'm not too sure if they're going to change a few things, if they're going to keep. I can see this Tri Slosher coming back and being a really useful pick uh, for this next map here. Um, but also have to note something that like surf and turf the way they pushed up at the very beginning they are staggering their specials so well and getting good pushes off it's just now they have to remember how far back the objective is and have making sure that they have one person keeping an eye on it because what Seekin did at the end there did did something that i love to see teams do is that when you notice one team is pushed up really far but the objective there's a there's a decent gap between the team and the objective just get behind and stall that objective and you're, they, it means the other team will have to turn around and it ends up creating a really good advantage point for that team. So what Seekin did there, that was a fantastic play. <laughs> Definitely, it was a very, very necessary play which causes it a lot, as you said, they were forced to go back and that causes a split push right there and that's a very easy time to catch them off guard and make picks. Absolutely. So now we hit on uh, Muscle Forge. I haven't uh, done too much on uh, Muscle Forge tower control lately, but there is definitely some good, some huge choke points in the trenches there. But we're seeing a um, a scope charger and a carbon roller come out on this uh, game from Surf and Turf, so that we know that this charger has a lot of free range in mid if it is protected up top. However, I believe there is a flight coming in behind the charger, so we'll see if the charger does live that which no they do not the uh the tetra Dooley succeeds in their flank and gets two and then the third gets picked off somewhere along the line strong start for prism here succeeding in that opening flank team surf and turf staggering the push the roller coming in taking out the clash blaster as three go down on the side of surf and turf again last remaining person on surf and turf is running tower and they are no more as the rest of prism is using their abilities and just getting positional advantage right here this collateral coming the from the charger as the dark tetra duelies go into the base find themselves a trade three go down on the side of prism and two are down on surf and turf the carbon roller is currently in mid pending up for their special pending up for their abilities and allowing the rest of their team to make pushes into mid and start taking more control of the match mm -hmm. however we see the clash coming in from the side the blob coming in from another the clash does get caught out seek it wasn't able to fully help that but surf and turf here trying to find a ways in it looks like two went down somewhere in mid and uh Prism here just able to keep themselves alive, finding the way, picking out the one at the time. The Carbon here with a nice play pick here on bridge. Just knew what their kit still had to do and just kind of bopped them off the bridge. Two go down on the side of Prism as the Carbon Roller is looking to get even more aggressive than they already do. Seeing two people out in the open, they're going to be taking out the Blob Lobber, but they are unable to secure the other kill. The Charger watching mid, going to be going down to the Dark Tetral Duel who are pushing onto the tower, looking to do a splash down, finding them <laughs> tells the end zap. Splash Omatic completely juked out. Three, a triple kill coming from that Dark Tetra release. Amazing play from them. Ooh, that is uh, that is definitely another uh, seeking moment as we have seen several times on uh, different different events. But Seekin is very good at finding their way around the back and picking off the back line and moving forward and pinching with their team. So this is working really well for Prism. I just uh, and now. Uh, for here for surf and turf they just have to really make sure that they have their flank paths painted 
um, and make sure that they keep an eye on that. The carbon here just going right in, just giving payback from what the Tetris caused, but now it's carbon time. Most of the team on Prism are currently staggered and coming back. Seeking going in for an aggressive play, gonna be going down for it, though the Blob Wobber is in a good spot to make an out. The Carbon Roller going in for an aggressive play, gonna be fighting a 1v1 with the Clash Blast 2 who is going to be traded out as the rest of Team Prism is staggering their spawn. Seeking going for an aggressive play, looking to take out the end zap which they do getting caught in a 1v1 with the splash matic who is going to be traded out by the blob lover the follow-up from bovis there really helped out there even though um <clears throat> like it, it just definitely really helped out there so now blob can take control prisms back in mid here um it looks like the the Tetris here are causing a, a panic on the one side, so they have to look at the Tetris now while Prism still pushes on the other side. But Chrissy here looking to see if maybe that can get a pick on this blob, but however is called out and, and the Clash comes in to save the day. A very well played from both sides right there. The Seeing that the Blob Lover was currently in their special and stopping them from using it was a very good play. But unfortunately, it didn't work out very well. Ray coming out on the from the Charger as the tower is currently about to reach checkpoint. Ray stopping the push, though it isn't going to stop it for very long. Splash getting on tower, going down to a well-placed bomb. Fizz trying to get out of there as they are getting back into it and in going down as they try to get back on, on tower. 50 seconds is left on the clock. Team Surf and Turf is feeling the pressure right now. They really are, and this is a tight space to be in too because the Clash has a lot of uh, good spots to be in. The Carbon can come around a corner and you just even throw just the burst to, or to help defend and uh but the tetra's got a good way the blob's got a good point down in the trench there but however it looks like surf and turf has made their way out but they do have to remember that they are pushed up into mid right now and the tower's still coming back from their trench Armor coming out from Prism as Seekin is going in for another aggressive push, tapping that tower once again. Gonna be going down to the splash o -Matic, who did an amazing play right there as Team Prism, seeing the fact that Surf and Turf is distracted, took mid-control bomb rush, forced to play right now as we are going into overtime. Armor coming out from Surf and Turf as Team Prism is pushing in. The Clash Blaster going down, though the Carbon is going to be going down on the side of Prism. Two go down on the side <laughs> of Prism, and so do on Surf and Turf. Make that three down on Prism. Bomb rush coming out from the Blob Lover, forcing the people on tower off. Blob Lover oh, getting on tower no. and taking out the end zap to end the match. That was looking really good for Surf and Turf there, but Bovis just doing what a blob can do best and keeps spacing out with those blobs. Had special too, used it to back them off the tower and just took the advantage to jump on and um, take that tower fight. It was just, just high risk, but managed to succeed. Very well played. A very good end. Unfortunate for Surf and Turf, it's just what the Blob does best. That spacing and getting you out of positions that they don't want you to be in. Mm -hmm. But the uh, same thing happened on this game as it did in Anchovy. Surf and Turf had successfully defended. They got mid control, but they didn't make sure the tower got back to mid. Um, before they looked up a little more. They had everybody in kind of a line in the middle. Seekint was able to just come around on the side again and even just tap it, uh, like forcing Surf and Turf to turn around and be like, there's still someone by the tower. It's not going to make it back here. We can't push with it. But the same thing had happened. Seekint found their way in and allowed Prism to just take that advantage of the distraction and uh, stop that potential... Um, push that was about to happen however surf and turf coming back at the very end able to get a three down and it just left the blob but it was looking strong for surf and turf at the end it really was but it's just unfortunate for surf and turf that the dark tetra dualies are an extremely aggressive weapon that can take advantage of flank routes extremely fast and can use them to easily take 1v1s and win those 1v1s fairly easily Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing here is that um, Surf and Turf, they're doing a really good job at keeping the paint control. Now it's just making sure that they see the extra paint coming down 
from the Tetras as they go around to get these back flanks. And if they can pinpoint that out early or realize the paths that Seekin is taking, they can catch the Tetras out early and then come in strong. However, we see a double back coming out from Surf and Turf. And I, I, I mean, I always enjoy to see this. I don't know about it. It definitely, <laughs> it definitely is very interesting to see a double back. It seems like the they decided to switch to the duly, the clear dapples to try and counter how Seekant plays to have another person try and go for aggressive back flanks, which is going to be working out for Surf and Turf as two go down. Prism going three down right now as it's just the Blob Blobber remaining on the field as the rest of Team Prism, I mean Surf and Turf, is getting in positions, taking bunker and just getting paint on that ground and getting positional advantages. What what a change up, but going from uh, that to the Dapples, yeah, to uh, do what the Tetris can do. You can see they're fighting it out here and Gudra coming out on top. The This clear Dapples pick is really paying off already from the start. The triple kill coming out from the Dapples, an amazing pick from Team Surf and Turf. This is exactly what they needed. They needed that extra aggression right there just to get into the base and well, counter the flanks by taking the flanks themselves keeping Team Prism in their base, single-handedly taking these 1v3s and surviving for very long, allowing the rest of their team to get past the second checkpoint and almost bring it to the third. Oh, what a strong start from Surf and Turf. Like, I don't think Prism was expecting that at all. And it just worked in their favor. And the cancel from the <laughs> Gudra is popping off, like, already at... Um... <laughs> Going back okay. in and finding the second kill. The Dapples popping off right now, doing amazing. Ray coming out from the side of Surf and Turf as the rest of Team Prism is trying to get back. The Junior get on Surf and Turf getting caught out in the open. Splashdown cancelled once again. Prism Team Prism is getting a bit too aggressive and too complacent and aren't watching for what's happening. <laughs> Looks like this jump here, it was the Tetris, so they were able to get out, uh, is able to punch it, pu punish the case shot for that. And uh, Tetris here looking to see if they could somehow find their way around now. Going on this wall, they see that the teammate went down from behind, but it looks like that the, the backlines are getting in two positions here where they're going to be one on mast and one kind of on the other side. They're near each other, but this way their long range fire does cross, so it makes it a lot harder for uh, the Tetras or the Clash to find their way in. Even the Junior, just one of them can see it and they can both call it out and look the same way. And that makes it really hard for these short range weapons to move in. Definitely is. Team Surf and Turf noticing the fact that they have one down, holding positions and waiting for that Clapples to come back. Even. Again, <laughs> finding themselves a kill, which allows the dark the clapples to get into a jump. Unfortunately, the splashdown is going to put them in a bad position, and three go down on the sur side of surf and turf as the ray is coming out from prism, and they're looking to make another push with this tower right here. This is the first push that prism has been able to actually attempt all game, and uh, that three down is really what they needed. However. It's going in reverse, two down uh, for the for the K shot is happening here. And Surf and Turf just going all in and Gudra getting the trade on Seekint there. Surf and Turf just, they are becoming this tidal wave that they have seek to be this entire set so far. And uh, they're looking still pretty strong in this last minute and a half. Especially if Team Prism is trying to find positions to just get into these 1v1s and get Seekin into great positions to go and pop up like they have been. But that Clapples has been nothing, doing nothing but stopping them from completely just going off and just forcing them to look behind them and not go aggressively. And oh it's just goodness. working out so well. The Dooley's going into a 1v1, going to have Seekin come out on top, though two go down on the side of Prism as they are forced to sit back and wait for the respawns. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just look at this position. Even like the K shots up here, just holding the pain control on top. The, the map is very blue right now. It is Ray coming out, looking to see if they get a pick. It looks like the jet did go down. I think Prism's going to take this opportunity to potentially move in to get another. They got both back lines. It's just the Clapples and this shot left, but Steven trying their best to stay alive. 
but uh, does get tag teamed in a 2v1. They see the Clapples is behind, distracting. At this point in time, it's going to allow the backlines to potentially get back into place, but Seek it finding one, but the Charger able to follow it up. And uh, with ten under 10 seconds left, Oh, Steven trying to, but there's a back flank! Look at there's, the Clapples, the Clapples! There's a back flank with the Clapples, finding the jump! Stop! Oh, not finding the second person, but that jump on the Blob Blobber is going to be a huge pick as it's, we go into overtime. Team Prism is reaching the first checkpoint. Two go down, the K-Shot goes down on the side of Surf and Turf. One going down on the, the blob. side of Prism. They go one! Touchdown jump going in! It's only the duelies left on the side of Prism. Charger being the last one alive. 30 seconds! Oh. <laughs> Bringing it one point away from winning team. Prism did an amazing job in overtime, but Surf and Turf would not let them win. Oh my goodness, what a push at the very end. As soon as the tower got into the street, you could see Prism was in a group together. They had the Blob, they had the, the Junior Paint, they had the Tetris, they had the Clash looking above. They had that basically secured, and it made it really hard for Surf and Turf to come back in, but the Charger, even from a down angle, still helped to apply something on that tower and allowed the K-Shot to come in and help pinch on the final person. So the 2v1 coming in handy at the very end and stopping it, yes, at the one point from taking the lead. Surf and Turf just found what they needed to do and that was countering the Tetras from, and doing what the Tetras were doing, but now like mirror matching it. So the Clapples were there to mirror match the Tetras and boy, did it ever work out for them. And following up with all the range, whew, that's something you don't normally see, but boy, I was so glad to see that. And to see it work so well like that, to take control, of course, in the end on the defense, it looked, it almost looked iffy as soon as the Prism got into the checkpoint, because that's where their comp really shines and you could see it. But the, the follow up with the range, again, just really worked well for Surf and Turf that game. It really did, especially with just stopping the duelies from just being able to make any type of pushes. It's really good on how defensively they are able to play just because they had that clapples that were able to just rush in, die, and if they did, just come back with quick respawn. <clears throat> yeah, and even, even then, it's just the, the clapples, I think the goal was to help find the tetras and just shadow them majority of the time and even then um oh wow <laughs> i'm just like at a loss for words because that, that was but man that was just very strong showing again specials were used so well and the the ranged weapons were uh cross-fired really nicely and uh even then with prism again at the very end it took it took almost the entire game before they finally got a push they wanted and um when they got that push, just a lot of a lot of pressure showing again. Like I said, the clash taking the elbow, the blob in there. They with the with the rebounds of the blobs in street. That's something that makes it really hard to get to tower from that area. So it's it's limited off, and you have to take high angles. But it, it that comp works around each other so well, and I've seen Prism do it several times. And just again, seeing both these teams come back here and play today at this first round was such a treat. It definitely was, and these were amazing maps for both teams to show exactly how good their comp was and exactly why they run this specific comp especially for entropy games with prism was that the ability for the duelies to just have so many flank routes and get into great positions and take those 1v1s or 1v2s and just take them by surprise and win them along with also having the clash blaster being able to stop people from being up on any type of snipe or purchase was an amazing showing from Prism and then on Manta Marina from Surf and Turf just being allowing to show how powerful the double backline was and just how amazing the clapples could be just if you have the backline to support them. Mm -hmm, absolutely and and for both teams again we saw like I mentioned uh, earlier in both in all games you could see that Surf and Turf is very good at their special coordination. Um, we saw them come out back to back to back. We saw how strong it was on Anchovy. It just the biggest thing was that um, when they got a lot of uh, mid control as soon as they stopped the push, but again, just forgot about the Tetras and how that they can come in from behind and left the objective alone still coming back. Uh, so the Tetras was able to stall that out. And that was just the one thing from those two games. But when Manta came around, that never happened. 
uh, the objective moved with, they had the range to keep back and watch it, they had the front line to keep up and be aggressive. It just, it countered it really nicely, but good job to Prism still for winning the set, uh, two to one. Great showing by Surf and Turf. Love to see you here, and I think we're going to take a uh, short break before we come back to round two.
All righty, everybody, and we are back to round two of Minnow Cup Tower Control Edition. We now have Rise and Shine versus the Villain Academy. And uh, Rise and Shine will definitely have some familiar uh, names on there. We got like Shmee, Bambird, um, Dino, Sakura, um, and I apologize if I get this wrong, but like Uze, if that's... If that's wrong, I apologize, but we're trying there. Villain Academy, I'm uh, not too sure of too many people on the on the team, but I do have to say, love the name. So I'm curious to see if the Villain Academy is, like, it could be off of something I don't know references too well. Or if they're going to play Villainous Weapons! <laughs> you never know. But anywho, we're starting this round off um, with, we see uh, the, the Vanilla Glugas. That is something we don't see too often. So Mines and Inkjet coming out there. Then we see the standard C-Jet, uh, Junior K-Shot with the Remix and a Brush. The brush is also going to be really good because, of course, on main stage, we know this is flank heaven for really anybody. As I say, anybody can flank on this map. So we're seeing a very neutral opening. It looks like one flank is trying to happen. We see the brush trying to get into street going um, to the other side, but does opt to back out, seeing that there is danger. It looks like one pick does finally happen and uh, the shot goes down on the side of Villain Academy and bubbles are ready for um, Rise and Shine, so we'll see if they're how they're going to push with them, if they're going to use them for checkpoint going in, but it looks like the brush does miss a pick and uh, does go down. Bubbles here popped on the other side. It's still a relatively neutral play, but however, we got a flank on the left-hand side. Ink Jets out. One for one. This is, a, this is a very neutral opening, but it looks like Villain Academy finally going to try to take a push down here, and uh, I don't know if they noticed that Shmeeb is in the corner here. Brush trying to come in and pinch, but Shmeeb opts to jump out while Sakura tries to <clears throat> uh, attempt a pinch, but a uh, pinch did not happen. So Villain Academy with the first checkpoint here um, and is able to break it. Ray coming out here, one trying to jump over, but the brush is in the way. However, does get backed up, isn't able to get that pick. Two are now contesting the tower from below, and uh, the second checkpoint has been broken. So Villain Academy looking really strong. It looks like one for one there. There's three down now on Villain Academy. So Rise and Shine able to defend, but what a strong opening by um, Rise and Shine. As uh, missiles are ready to go, it looks like they're just trying to get paint control and uh, get back into mid here. So we see armor has been popped. Missiles are coming out as well. And uh, we're back into this kind of neutral phase that happened at the start here. So we're just looking to see which team's going to get the first pick, who's going to push off uh, first and uh, potentially come back. It looks like the junior does go down off to the side corner there. The brush is moving in, looking for the second pick, but uh, doesn't quite get it as missiles do come out. Do lock on to all four, I believe, which is really strong here, <laughs> but doesn't get them too far. It looks like a pick did happen on snipe from a bomb, but Shmeeb does go down and return from the jet squelcher. Backing up from those missiles, two are down. Three are down on Rise and Shine. So Villain Academy able to move back up here and uh, potentially take out the one side, but the junior here with bubbles, getting the insta pop, but not finding any picks with it. Isn't able to pop that last bubble. Looks like armor does come back out as well, and we're back into this mid fight. Um, as we're going to be seeing the tr the rise and shine trying to get back in of control. Brush going down on the left side as it's just the junior. Well, the juniors trying to make a play in the mid using their special graphing having it right now with two specials on the side of rise and shine with one on the side of villain academy and zap is going to be going down as rise and shine are just trying to hold position right now it's been a very neutral mid play and right now when it comes out from the neutral mid play the villain academy has been able to come out on top uh, majority of the times they're able to pick out one move in well and then they get the second pick from a, a pinch in a corner so they're doing well here however both teams do when they uh, push with a special they're able to go one for one which is why it's making this very neutral as team rise and shine are trying to get back from that push team villain academy is just holding mid control right now and just trying to get up their specials as team the ends up here is trying to make a push against the c-jet finding some hits but not finding that kill as the rest of team rise and shine are using trying to get a mid the bubble combo coming out from the junior not gonna be finding anyone to start but the rest of team rise and shine are pushing in the brush finding a player two down on the side of the villain academy inkjet coming out has team 
Rise and Shine are looking to make another push. Mm -hmm. Rise and Shine did try, but Villain Academy ready with the counter specials as I think they realized like the the specials that Rise and Shine were putting out were coming out like really it seemed kind of early and not quite forward to like a point that could be really uh, pressured because Villain Academy still had a lot of room to back up from them. But however, right now, Rise and Shine, they did get two down on the Villain Academy. They can use this to advantage. We see the bubbles coming out, just clearing Snipe because it, the missiles did find all the people around from behind. So Brush here looking around from the corner, we've got the, the remix on the tower. I think this first checkpoint can finally be broken. And Booyah is at the ready, but there's a flank from the Glugas getting two. Are they going to get the third? They do. And this Find... Gluga's coming in from behind here. Find three, getting the fourth. <laughs> and watching the match. The Glugas <laughs> wiping, getting themselves an ace to end that. Amazing play, amazing, well, just positioning right there. And really just completely shut down Rise and Shine's push. Wow, yeah, at the very end there. Again, uh, you kind of missed a little bit of it. I don't know uh, when you kind of came in there, but again, the start was very neutral play. It took a little while before picks started to happen. And even when picks did happen, it went one for one, um, just kind of back and forth to a point where it was kind of almost more of like a 3v3 for, <laughs> for the neutral. Uh, but then finally, Villain Academy was able to get those that extra pick and make that really strong start push that uh, Rise and Shine just struggled to uh, actually stop and when they did uh, finally stop it again it was just kind of back in the neutral play but Villain Academy was looking a bit stronger in the neutral game getting those little bit of extra picks because it took uh, almost all the way towards the end before Rise and Shine was able to finally get that push but they missed the flank on the Glugas and the Glugas was able to come in and get that quad. Very powerful play. As we're going on to New Albuquerque Hotel, a very interesting map, especially for Rainmaker. Well, not Rainmaker, but for <clears throat> Tower Control, as you know, this is one of the very few maps that has the tower going over a pair of water, which leads to very interesting plays and honestly makes armor kind of a bad idea in some situations. Mm -hmm. I was just about to mention, this is one of probably three maps that I know off the top of my head where armor on tower can actually uh, cause the push to fail. And uh, um, just with how, just any, with just a singular shot uh, to break the armor, if you're that close to going there, it just takes it right off. And if you go into that water, just it's just a big win for the person who shot off the armor. So if teams are running armor here, they really need to make sure when they're using it and that, that the tower rider goes into a way that when they get bopped, they're not going to go into the water, but they're gonna go like back uh, onto land. So it's something they actually have to get their angles for. So if they do get hit, they're not gonna go in the water. And here we go. Here's a Hydra that I love to see, as we know, um, the backline weapons do shine on a map like this over bridge. Um, but the Hydra's really going to have to watch out for that range blaster. A huge pick was the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco. Very interesting pick that is kind of being trying to see if it can be put into the really high ranked meta right now as Team Villain Academy is running a double backline comp right now with very heavy midline. It's a very a, a passive comp that might be able to work out in their favor if they can get a good opening push to start. Mm, it looks like the, the Hydra did get a pick, but the Glugas ended up uh, picking it off in return. Glugas here getting that pick, predicting that uh, jump up onto Snipe there, seeing another one from the far corner, but of course the range isn't going to quite hit that. Uh, but good pick there by the Glugas. We've seen them go really strong, but three go down all in a line there. That is a wipe. Villain Academy just goes down and... Uh, now Rise and Shine can get control here and potentially push this tower. Rise and Shine grabbing good positions to hold out. Armor coming, well, uh, armor ready on the side of Rise and Shine. The K-Pro going down as Villain Academy loses their Rapid Blaster and their ja and their Galuga Duelies as Rise, as the Villain Academy is trying to take back Rise and Shine's position. Ray coming out onto the tower, forcing the K-Pro to jump off, and they are going to be going down for that. 
Mm -hmm. There was at one point in there where we saw the Villain Academy, they were all trying to come in through the same way. The Hydra did see it. They did get a pick on one that was going too far forward. But, uh, however, the specials that came out to stop the push was really well, and uh, the jump outs were definitely needed to go there as Villain Academy were able to come back in. We see the Inkjet coming down from the side, just pushing the members of Rise and Shine back into their street where they can't really go far. Bubbles being used in defense here as... Uh, as two were trying to push the junior here, but the junior just said, no, I'm gonna bubble, and it, it just goes in reverse here. As the Villain Academy is a delayed wipe, as the rest of Rise and Shine are pushing into mid to try and push that tower past that first checkpoint, or at least get halfway there to take the lead as it's a very low scoring game. Bubbles are already on the side of Rise and Shine. They have armor. Booyah coming out from the K-Pro. Bubbles being used right now to stop people from firing on that K-Pro. Finding two Bubbles people on the side too. of Villain Academy. K this jet is firing down on that tower. Though lead is going to switch to Rise and Shine. Amber going in for that pick. Finding the pick. Galuga's going for... Going for Jeez. the end zap. Though they are going to be <laughs> completely knocked out of the park. Pro going up a bit too the rapid blaster pro going up too far going down for that 48 points remaining on the side of rise and shine in the tower is continuing to be pushed oh i gotta make a comment there on Sh shmeeb's mechanics there in that in just the play that happened in that corner were very well moved timed almost going down there but just moved around enough where they didn't go down however the glue guys in a prime spot here about running out of shots just at the moment the jump was landing in that is an unfortunate timing there because they had that on lock but uh, just mistimed the landing a little bit two people as two people on riot the villain academy have their specials ready armor is coming out as the right is being ready to be used right now as armor is coming out right now rise and shine try forced out of position Inkjet coming out on the side of Villain Academy, trying to find the pick on that Hydra, which they do. Two go down on the side of Rise and Shine, make that three, as it's just the junior who has their bubble ready, trying to wait for that pick, to, or time for them to get onto that checkpoint to make the pick with the bubbles. Gonna be forced completely back by the missiles and that pro. K-Pro going down on the side of Rise and Shine. Bubbles coming out, tower is past the second close. checkpoint. Great coming out on the side of Villain Academy, trying to get back on that tower, push it to that 30 point, to jump onto the tower, K Hydra K-Pro, Hydra <laughs> goes down, two go down on the bot on the- That's three, on the oh my god, and just Shmeeb, Shmeeb trying to get this last person, getting a pick, this is just, it's, it's, it's a splat bath, and just the glue goes here, Shmeeb goes down, I think that's gonna be lead. Lead is not going to be changed. The last second, the, the case not going for the jump. Switching the lead at the very last second, bringing it down to 23 points and continuing that push as it is the K Pro goes down for their over aggression. Nine seconds left on that clock. Team Rise and Shine are really trying to make a push right here as they're going to have to go into overtime. Oh my goodness, but uh, Rise and Shine on the tower, now they have to have one to turn to two people nearby it, but now the biggest thing to watch out for is at least, like, we've seen the Glugas come in from behind, the Ray's getting the people off the tower, the Rapid does go down on the bridge, so there is no one there to get on the tower yet, but the Glugas are right there, they have to get the Glugas off the tower, they do manage to successfully do that, and now they have the missiles and the jet in the way, they do have a Booyah Bomb at the ready, there's a lot of fire coming toward this tower, and the Pro can't boost Booyah until someone else gets on, Shmeeb gets on, Booyah trying to be thrown down, but it's just a little too late as the Jet and the K-Shot both move in at the same time to get the K-Shot on the tower while the Booyah Bomb is still in charging phase. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Very well played from Villain Academy as they just really took advantage of that Hydra being down and really the Hydra just kind of being in very weird spots and really just taking advantage of that and in weird spots that's normal <laughs> uh to some people actually I know to me it's a normal but uh <laughs> but like I said at the very beginning uh before any of these games even started before round one what brings the most hype for tower control 
is those little bits before lead is about to be reclaimed and like checkpoints are just there and we just saw that happen in this match what a splat bath that happened on that tower oh my goodness also point out shmeeb got 18 ka in that it was still also really high i think the next one was 16 but shmeeb again doing really well with movement getting picks it's just uh villain academy and then i'm coming out on that just that team fight there just that one point and it was tied there even it was so close very well played from everyone involved but the villain academy just really took it at that end with that intense duel right for the lead and they brought it down straight to the wire and they took it out on top wow they just took, took, took the breath away like this is it's only round two at the start of this tournament and i'm sure even off stream there's also close games like this happening um that you hear the stories from the other players in this tournament event but now moving on to this third game it is tower control mako mart a very interesting mode and map i honestly think it's in my opinion mako's second worst mode i'm not a big fan of it to be fair i not also the biggest fan of tower in general i have but... a teammate who loves this map mode like absolutely loves it because uh they love the luna blaster and uh blasters can do a lot on here and we did see a rapid pro uh come out on albacore and i wonder if we may see another potential blaster come out on mako as well we might the Brass, Rapid Blaster Pro has a bit of a weird, has a very weird slot to fill, especially if with the comp that they were running, it was a very aggressive play uh, with what they were doing, and it will be interesting to see if they keep up what they were doing and go with it for this map. Blob coming out uh, versus a Charger, and we also see a Keishin, so we don't see any Blasters here, but we do see a couple uh, different kind of slasher variants between the Blobber and the Keishin, so this will be interesting to see because these two weapons can control stacks very well, and underneath Snipe, as we see, two already immediately going down on the side of Villain Academy, and... Uh, the the Brush is making a return as well, but it's a, it's a different Brush this time. As Team Rise and Shine are trying to go for that early tower lead, as they are getting past that first checkpoint, trying to find that pick on those on the bucket which they do the brush going in finding their double kill continuing to make a push and trying to get that charger out of position missiles coming out to stop the charger from being up there on snipe the k shot hopping down straight into the loving arms of three different <laughs> enemy teams as the rest of team rise and shine are getting on that tower and getting it past that second checkpoint ray coming out inkjet going to try and stop it though it is unfortunately unable to and they're going to be going down as, as they land mm -hmm. they looked a little iffy there with the case shot just kind of wanting to go in and get a hug from three of the members that were waiting below just like not the not the time for a hug there uh but uh able to still come back from that when they were just a bit staggered there so good job the villain academy for regrouping finally and moving forward but now they're trying to push the tower when the members of rising or rise and shine are uh right in the way so i think just a bit early on the push attempt before getting a man advantage definitely as we're going to be seeing phil and academy really just trying to stall the push right now and get their specials ready ray is coming out right now going to be finding that pick on the blob three going out on the side of rise and shine tilling villain academy knows who the last person is and they know they have missiles and they, they are getting aggressive and are going down for that positional play as team R villain academy is finally getting their ability to push right now getting themselves to the first checkpoint as the sloshing machine is going in finding the direct on the first hit no getting the information on where people are and really trying to just stall out the enemy team from making a push here inkjet and bubbles coming out completely stopping the tower push right now though to go down on the side of rise and shine but to go down on the side of villain academy Mm -hmm. This uh, this junior here dancing for their life, but the brush coming in to help finally in the shot, just kind of taking over. Their one v one going for the tower. I think this shot's gonna break the checkpoint. They do manage to break the checkpoint. Good job. I think Villa Academy here with the three. Charger trying to take the tower. There's still so many people of Rise and Shine in the way, and Villain Academy is just kind of jumping into them just to go and 
get try to attempt to get that lead because it was so close instead of just waiting for a second and then finally trying to reclaim that lead sometimes that little bit of extra patience can come a long way but in this case uh rise and shine punishing that uh jump in on the tower realizing how close it is and catching their feed team rise and shine trying to control mid right now as they hop on tower honestly a bit too early as the rest of team villain academy is able to collapse on that tower force the blob blobber off and get a pick off in the blob blobber the inkjet coming down though a well-placed bomb a well-placed bubble and bomb are going to quickly take them out of commission and we see the bubbles coming out trying to clear that last one off a of snipe it looks like moved them back a little bit but uh all, it looks like a lot of them are up there, so they're called out with the missiles. They do see what's coming around in behind. The shot going in a little bit too far and getting a uh, collapse of the blob. Going forward there with the blobs there and just picking off. Nice snipe by the charger here, just getting that corner, but is picked off by another bomb. The junior here on the tower painting up. It looks like there was one trying to contest, but backs up right into another bomb. Inkjet going out, not going to be finding too many people, but applying a huge amount of pressure as the rest of Rise and Shine are really just trying to wait themselves out to make another push here. Villain Academy taking out the brush and going in for an aggressive play, trading out Shmeeb, which is going to be stopping the missiles on the side of Rise and Shine, but that won't be stopping the push. 44 seconds is left on that clock. Team Villain Academy is really trying to just make another push happen here. Shmeeb jumping in, going down once again as the Sloshy Machine getting a nasty double right there as they are looking to get aggressive once again. With that 28 seconds left on the clock, they are really trying to make a play right now. Mm -hmm. Villain Academy has to do what they were doing before, except they have to make sure that they have an advantage at this point in time. It's neutral. They did pick off that blob, which is huge for them. The machine is in a good spot, and now they just have to clear this way and now look forward to the next checkpoint here. Clear that way. The Slosher's trying their hardest. I believe there was an inkjet out there, but does get down. Is the Oh, it gets cancelled! Schmidt cancels it! Is on the tower for the last couple seconds with the blob covering it! That cancel was huge! They needed that Shmeeb. cancel and they got it. <laughs> Shmeeb canceling the splashdown and with the complete distraction of the splashdown, the K shot thought they were safe. Fortunately, Shmeeb finds a way. Uh -huh. <laughs> and with the bubbles there to help protect the tower right after it too, it just kind of secured uh, the, the solid win there for Rise and Shine. So. Rise and Shine able to take that last game win um, over Villain Academy. But Villain Academy, they almost took it. It's just uh, they got a little bit too rushed in on getting that, again, the same, like the same thing that happened on the last one. Just caught the rush in on the tower and they had to really um, try to stay on there. So they tried to do the same thing as on Albacore. Just kind of go in one at a time and see who could stay alive for what was being uh, thrown at them because it succeeded on Albacore, but it didn't succeed this time around. It, yeah, definitely. It was a very, the bubbles were a very interesting play and honestly a very good pick for a few of the maps, but a few of the times the bubbles were definitely popped a bit too early. But mm. uh, other than that, they were amazingly played and really good at just applying a massive amount of pressure and just forcing anyone on tower just to at least back off and rethink their push. Mm -hmm. But either way, both teams coming out with strong showing and came down to the wire, especially on like the last two games with where it was even tied for a good second there. But one point difference there in the middle of the of the uh, Mako game and just the tie. Very strong suit showing from uh, both teams and glad we got to see these two go head to head. Um, but congrats to Villain Academy for coming out 2-1 and uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Definitely. As we're going to be going on to a quick break before we reach straight into our third match. Don't go anywhere. We're watching.
<laughs> Welcome back everyone as we're gonna be starting us off today with terrestrial waters otters and team soul I hope you're ready to watch some towers because we're gonna be widening them <laughs> I mean, there's just only a singular tower that will be uh, ridden, but you know. You never know. There might have been an, uh, there might have been a secret update during this match. Two towers now. Internet decides to crash. Second tower appears. Ta-da! Thanks, server. Boom. Ta -da! <laughs> Anywho, right. real water otters versus Team Soul. Um, I these I definitely I've heard of the water otters before because a couple members that uh, uh that I used to coach on another team are now uh, or have been put on this team, but uh, to my collection that they are not playing today. So I'm not too familiar with these two teams, but uh, Butters, do you know uh, uh, anything about the two teams that we might be seeing here? Well, I can tell you that the terrestrial water otters are under the Ocean 7 umbrella, along with also having Team Soul being a very small and unknown team, but luckily for me, I have know a lot about them as they have a very solid team comp of a very aggressive brush player along with a very very aggressive nzap player that also can flex their junior along with having a very well balanced 96 slash k52 gal and a k pro player to end it off well, that sounds like it uh, can definitely work out for them from here. And uh, it looks like we definitely got an interesting map lineup for this one uh, that I am uh, haven't seen in a good while uh, for tower control in comp. But the, the very first map we have definitely seen, we're starting off on the reef. A very interesting tower control map, as it's one of the very few that, well, well actually all of them, that start all the reef maps require you to control bridge but especially for this one bridge is an extremely necessary thing to take control of and it's going to be very interesting to see how the teams are going to go about taking control of this mm -hmm. team soul coming out with the sploosh seven and the brush uh from there so that would be nice if they can get in from behind and kind of work together to put one another like use each other's i want to say flank ability to push the members of the water otters into each other's like specials like the brush can come around from one way and push them directly into its splooshes hammer i know i've seen that happen before but we'll see if uh uh team soul uh can make that happen the ends up going down on the side of terrestrial water otters as two go down i mean as they the k pro and the splash trade each other out Team Soul grabbing the second checkpoint. Ray coming out on the side of Terrestrial Water Waters as the brush on the side of Team Soul goes down. Dapples charging headfirst to the tower, going down to the end zap as more people on the Terrestrial Water Autos are just throwing themselves towards the tower. Something that I find interesting here is that it's actually the sploosh with hammer that was riding the tower while the end zap was going down to go try and find the pick. That's something you don't usually see, but it must have been like, okay, I've got tower, you go. Um, but that's something you don't normally see. However, it looks like uh, we've got quite the, the splats going down in the corner as um, members from uh, Team Soul did go down there. We see the this, this Dapple pick as well is another uh, interesting pick for this map as they got the beacons though and a bomb rush. It looks like they're going to use that bomb rush to try to flush out an area, but there is one member in the corner. So this bomb rush is uh, dedicated to them. <laughs> as three go down on the side of terrestrial water otters as team soul is making their push and just continuing to go ends up riding the tower as the 07 gets on it ends up gets off the 07s continues to ride ends up getting caught in the enemy ink and is going to be going down for that as this loosh pops the hammer on tower <laughs> completely denying anyone that tries to get on it splash down jump onto the tower to clear all the bombs off as they are trying to get past that second checkpoint unfortunately they are unable to do so so we have now just discovered why that's the sploosh that is riding the tower if the sploosh has hammer they're just going to pop it as soon as someone tries to go for tower however that hammer can be picked off from a from afar as uh, it was able to get a pick there and uh help keep the tower secured in an area but the hammer is not really being used forward to help get other picks uh while the end zap in return is trying to go be the uh forward instead once and while the hammer could have uh led the way as well 
The Dapple Dooley's on the side of Terrestrial Water Outer is going down as the Brush goes in for a splashdown, completely cutting off the end zap from the rest of their team as the end zap on Team SOL goes down. T Crash left to himself as the K Pro is going into a 1v1 against the end zap on the Terrestrial Water Outer's K Pro going to take the victory on that as they are going into mid to try and take bridge control and take them out from bridge. Oh, this brush here looking to see if they can get something in, but goes right into the bomb rush, just missing him. And the the, 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 the Dapples just getting the three there in total, just dodging around all the lines. I'm surprised that they got out of that, uh, got out of that alive, but does go in a little, definitely too far right into the members of Team Soul and does get picked off. However, we see Fish here coming in from the side. The hammer on tower has been popped, but they are going to team up with a teammate and get a pick and return as the tower is still looking strong. And if uh, the water otters can keep this up, they could potentially take lead here. But the zap does stop that. Jumps are coming in, the bomb rush coming out. We'll see if maybe they can hold control to potentially go back in for a push. Uh, but they do have to remember that their zap is just coming back in. So Dapple's here looking to try to find a way around, but now they're in a bit of a staggered area and I don't think they're gonna get this push off back again. Splash finding themselves a trade as the Two go down on both sides. Splashdown onto the tower. Gonna be taking out the end zap, riding that tower as the brush continues to go in, finding another pick, trying to get that last person as they have their special ready and they're popping their bomb rush though they go down to the end zap. 30 seconds is left on that clock as Team S, Team Soul is really looking to just try and hold positions right here and get their specials up and make some plays. Panic Rhea coming out on top. It is going to be surviving as that is going to force everyone on Team Terrestrial Water Otters to get completely off that tower or off the bridge. Mm -hmm. Even though the Booyah was panicked, like it, I wouldn't, it wasn't really panicked. It was more of a self-defense effort because the sploosh was there to follow up for those distracting. However, I don't think any picks did end up happening. But anywho, we are in the last bit here and the Otters have to stay alive, but it's going two for two. That is three down. It's just the jet. That is game, and that is a game uh, for Team Soul. Very well played by them. Was having that very, very passive playing 07, really just playing around their stamp and just waiting for Team Trestle Water Autos to get aggressive and just pick them off whenever they do. Very, very small amounts of picks, but the picks that they got were very important to the victory that they got. Mm -hmm. It's definitely interesting having like the, the sploosh be more back and have the end zap as the slayer. I know there is a couple teams that do do that. It's very uncommon to see, but also seeing this kind of like swap is quite interesting because then a team doesn't expect it when they're going on. It's just like, oh, okay, uh, the zap's probably riding the tower because that's usually what they're meant to do uh, in some cases. Uh, but they put the sploosh on instead with the hammer at the ready and uh, the sploosh can still paint as well. So even with it being a little more behind, it can still put out a decent number of paint. So the zap was just uh, gonna go in and use that little bit of extra range for those picks to get up uh, instead. Definitely. As we're going on to Schellendorf Institute, this is a very interesting tower control map, and depending on whether or not you play midline to backline will determine how much you like this map. This is uh, this is where all of the hidden E-leader mains come out uh, a lot of the times. Because this is also, we were talking about earlier, like on Albacore from the last game, how armor on that map can be a bad thing. This is another one of those maps where armor can be a very bad thing, especially on that the kid checkpoint <laughs> or the first because uh, I know in particular of course with the me being the weapon I am when I run CI hydra on here and I'm on the tower just a couple of bobs because usually the way you're standing on tower is that when you're on tower you're sh you're aiming towards the glass so when you get bopped you're going into the abyss and that this is where armor <laughs> decides to splat you so we'll see if armor also decides to come out here <laughs> It's very, it's a very, it's very funny to see when you just cha cha slide straight into the void without any of your knowledge or consent, as the E leader on the other side of the map starts to laugh maniacally. Uh, <laughs> or just the entire team when they see it happen, right? Just whoever bops off gets a gets a gets a laugh, and again, you'll see, you'll see what. Uh... 
if the back lines do come out here or if they're just gonna play what they know and play uh just what we kind of saw in the last one where there wasn't too much range we saw the jet uh from the one team so that still might come out but uh for the other side i wonder if they're going to bring a long range weapon or if they're just going to stick with what they have because if they know it they can definitely make it work a hundred percent I'm very excited to just see what the weapon comps are going to be going with and if we're going to be seeing uh, a backline come in for really either of them that's not the C-Jet. It would be very interesting to see if they go for a more heavier backline like a Hydra or an E-Leader on either side. And here we go, we're about to, we're about to get an answer to our question. Sea jet still coming out on the one side and a dynamo that wasn't something i was expecting because usually uh, if a dynamo takes the top they really have to work around what their opponent is but i think they uh, called that the jet was probably going to be the biggest problem there on glass so the dynamo has a little bit more safety but does have to make sure that they are moving around and flicking at the right time Team Terrestrial Water Autos getting their aggressive pick on the brush to start us off as they are going to start taking that tower. Inkjet being popped on the side of Terrestrial Water Autos. The end zap dropping headfirst into danger. No, no fear at all. Finding themselves in a bad position, but luckily for them, their teammates were right there to help them and take out two of them. Brush going for the splashdown, forcing that end zap into an even worse position than they already were in. End zap going down as tower is going to get past that first checkpoint oh the dynamo they're just kind of waiting there i don't know if they saw or knew if any of the other members were on glass but i know kind of a dynamo flick from below on tower just for up on glass can add a lot of pressure and instead the dynamo was just kind of there i don't know if they were just refilling their ink tank but something the dynamo could do there is just flick up and it would cause a lot of pressure but um even then the not too far of a lead here right now as we see people going down in uh, mid here left and right and uh, seeing if the side's gonna be taken over. We see, I believe the jet or the squelchers were up on top there. We saw one of the long range shots go, but it looks like Team Soul was trying to push on the side. Does get pushed off by something. Toxic Mist does find the brush here, but three there are trying to come in and stop this tower. Brush is opting to jump out. Very good play from that brush as the rest of Team Soul is really trying to find an O opening here to make that push. The Booyah Bomb, Forcing the rest of Territorial Water Autos off to the right side of the map as armor is coming out from that end zap, pushing the tower even further and further. Though, with a Booyah Bomb coming out and the splashdown from that brush, it might be an opportunity for Team Soul to make a push here. <laughs> I, I completely lost what side of the map was happening on what. Uh, the team soul was so pushed up really far but no one was on the tower so it was just kind of stuck in mid and now water otter is able to stop that aggressive play was able to also do the same thing here but it looks like the brush and the dynamo uh do have it under control here the dynamo being up top in a good spot here where the below flicks are just very dangerous but the squelchers there dodging really nicely and able to pick off the dynamo they do secure the lead and they are able to start taking down the checkpoint uh in choke here and they do pop armor in the choke so the, we'll see if anyone gets bopped but it doesn't it looks like they do pass the place where armor bop could be dangerous the remaining two on territorial water autos are coming through mid as it's really just to go down on the side of soul as that's another opening for team territorial water autos to make a push here as the oh. Enzap almost falls off the edge due to their own accord. Blue Racer going for that splashdown, not finding anyone, but forcing the Tower Rider into a terrible position. That's a full wipe on the side of Territorial Water Autos as Team Soul is making a push here. Team Soul needs to get this side secured and they need to make sure that they have someone by the objective able to take it. Dynamo here is even trying to push up, but it looks like this. someone was trying to shred it but uh, did opt to back out, which was a good job because they didn't have uh, all the stuff they needed. All the members of Water Otters were on that glass point there, being uh, shot out by Dynamo and other things here. Oh, no. <laughs> so we're going to be seeing the K-Pro fall straight into that void. Dynamo going down to a well-placed shots by that jet as it is just the K-Pro remaining as they are forced to go back 
getting into a backed into a corner they go down wonderful 2v1 play there by the zap and the and the splash but the the splash opted to back out instead of stay in the fight um causing the other member for the water otters to go down but that was a nice 2v1 play there for pushing up and being aggressive As Team Soul is really trying to make a push here, getting their specials ready, two down on the side of Territorial Water Ottles. They know where one of them is. Dynamo is going to be going down. This is a huge pick for Team Territorial as they are really just holding that position, waiting for Team Soul to just get aggressive as they did and pick them off when they do. The splash is going down in mid. Dynamo is getting raid out, bombed out, and they go down to the ray. Mm -hmm. Team Soul's got five seconds. They only have one person by the tower and their other members in behind. So the tower ice here has to try to, oh, wow, okay, stay on there and and uh, attempt. But uh, just just literally the, the, the shortest time gap missed for getting on the tower. And I, I'm sure this is one of the moments where it's just like, but I was on the tower. And if, if you played that back in slow motion, it was just just literally a tad behind getting on tower <laughs> it's a very unfortunate uh, turn of events right there but luckily for us we're going into the tiebreaker match as we're going on to snapper canal on tower control a very open map in a another one of the maps where you can be shot off the edge i uh, back to back you'd love to see it <laughs> I swear, if we see all three of those maps come in play at one point, where uh, the <laughs> literally the might, map terrain can you see, I mean, you might you just down. <laughs> just don't run your armor at that point. You don't need it. Yep, yep. For tower, I mean, you can uh, armor isn't uh, like it can help on some tower maps, but on this one in particular, you don't necessarily need it. You can use a bunch of other specials to help get tower forward. But um, this is another map that has it has uh, the hills um, to keep control of to help with certain checkpoints. It's got a lot of flank routes, so we'll see if any of the teams uh, like that brush can come in and take a back route and pinch from behind. Um, lots of different ways to come around and contest the tower, and and then it all comes down to that last little bit if they can get over that little water gap uh, with their specials, because it is a very difficult area to get over if you don't have a special coordination being pulled off. It is extremely difficult to get over. You either need to completely wipe the enemy team right before it or have an absurdly good amount of missiles, booyah bombs, specials, booyahs, really anything just to get over that area. But as soon as you do, it is really hard for that enemy team to really get you off that tower after you get past that third checkpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm curious to see if the dynamo might come back here. I think the dynamo will be definitely more... Uh powerful on on this stage here with the hill control um but still it is definitely wide open so there's still a lot of uh range to be aware of because in that time they had to fight the the jets range with the ray and they also had a cds to deal with so it made it a bit difficult for the dynamo there but even then i uh did see why they did the pick because the dynamo up on top of glass is very strong getting like the the flicks down from below getting turf control it can do the same thing in the primary checkpoint which is over by the hill area so if it's up on top it can just spray down uh turf or go underneath and flick above and with the booyah bomb it, it can be uh pretty good there but it can be countered pretty easily it can, it can definitely be countered very easy, easily, easily, but if the enemy team just lets the dynamo get into position, there is very hard. little that can be done to get it out of position. Spot, there's no stopping it. <laughs> As we're going into our final match, I switch off of the dynamo, pulling out the Clash Blaster, the default Clash Blaster. Very interesting pick, along with coming out with the Galuga, the Kenza Galuga Dually is a very interesting pick from both players. Mm -hmm. We do still see armor on both sides. However, the armor on the one team coming up from the Kenza Galugas, and uh, however, the two go down already on the side of the Water Otters. Uh, make that three, and the Clash is in the way. I don't think the Duallys is going to be able to get a pick here and is just forced to uh, go back. However, Blue Racer here was looking to try to see if they could uh, keep zoning out, but did get picked off in return. 
Nice Booyah Bomb there to help save the brush, but the brush opting to go back on tower to push a little forward into the literally everybody on Water Otters. <laughs> As the rest of Team S, I mean Team Terrari territorial water autos are just making a push here the brush comes in finding two people completely demolishing that push as it is just the end zap left on the right side of the map as the brush is coming in and well, just riding that tower finding the pick on the end zap but not being able to get it past that first checkpoint or to the lead Mm -hmm. The brush there, um, trying to go for lead, but it's still early in the game. What the brush could have done is just kind of waited around or looked in a forward direction just to stall other people out from coming to the tower. Just wait for an extra teammate to come around to give you a hand. That way you can actually secure a decent push and get even farther than what the lead currently is. As the team soul is going th through down with a staggered push on one of them, it's really just for a team trust territorial to just take positions. The Galuga duel is finding the pick on the tower rider, though the cape, the Kenza brush is gonna be taking out the duelies. Team territorial getting past the first checkpoint. Kegal going down to their over aggression as team territorial reaches the second checkpoint. Mm -hmm. The Otters finally found what they needed here, and uh, they were picking the members off in the street there. The Clash coming in, just zoning out really well, does end up getting the trade there. Tower's kind of stuck in this corner. It's just the Zap, who's uh, looks like that they're coming around. It looks like they're going to try to keep the Tower stalled in this corner. Wow, what a, what a play by the Zap, just kind of swoops in, stalls the Tower there, and then is going all the way around, but goes kind of completely out of place. So the, the Zap, in this case, is doing what we sh would normally see the, uh, the the Dapples do and getting a pick on top of it and going back to Dapper. The Ray coming out, finding the pick on that K-Pro or K-Gal. Hammer coming out, finding one kill, though they're going to be out in the open and going to be unfortunately missing the Hammer throw, but not going down as they are going to get aggressive again, finding the pick on the Dapples and continuing to make a push here as they are going to be trying to take the Jet out of this match right now. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like we see Crash, just kind of the only one on the tower there, just trying to stall it forward. We see the brush trying to do something here, and this is where Team Soul needs to take a breather. They need to come in and go uh, together instead of one at a time if they want to try to reclaim uh, the lead that Water Otters have right now. But instead, you can see that they're coming in staggered. They're not, uh, they're not really being as patient. Uh, they're just trying to make a play that hopefully works, and you can see it coming out from each person one after another and water otters is just punishing that really heavily as they completely wipe after they reach the second checkpoint this is the crucial moment that team soul really needs to just get these off the tower finding one of them off the tower and winning the other one to near death and bringing them there as it is they barely reach the third checkpoint but they have to go across that water once again mm, they will have to go across the water but they definitely know how to do that i think they realize that Team Soul is putting themselves in, in a spot here where one's kind of coming in on a different side and uh, the team play is kind of really separate right now. So um, it's just coming back from another. It just depends on who's going to get the picks. However, two members from the side of uh, the Otters are down. This is Team Soul's opportunity to go up together, secure that tower path so that they can uh, come back forward and potentially fight towards that water checkpoint. They do catch two out. Looks like this Booyah Bomb is going to go towards that Ray. Uh, we see the Gal going to try to get Tower here and ride it, but there is someone on the back side that will contest the way. But the Gluga is trying to make a play of their own, but does go down in the 2v1 on the side. And there is only 20 seconds left in the game. Uh, Team Soul's got uh, potentially only one more chance to make a solid push happen here. Hammer coming out as it is really trying to just get that get the end zap out of it, which they do get the end zap down. And Ray coming out, finding the pick on the K-Pro, though with two seconds left on the clock, Team Territorial grabs the tower. Oh my goodness. Just again with the similar thing, Outlaw was the one on the tower there. Just Crash came in just a, a little bit too late there uh, from coming in and respawning, but uh, the Otters there definitely punishing the separation to uh, come take lead and very high KA across the board from all of them. Like, look how even that was. It was, I mean, very well played from Team Territorial right there. 
Uh, it, defi- it definitely came down to uh, the ones that were actually grouping up more in, in that one because we saw the K was pretty even and it came down to which team was grouping up more and the answer there was the Water Otters. So they were able to get past uh, that uh, one checkpoint and go over the go over the water part. They got about partway through before they did get shut down, but they did manage to get through there after uh, succeeding in uh, getting a, a wipe. So it came out towards the end there and uh, who had more of the team play. It definitely was. But to all of those who are watching, thank you so much as we're going to be switching off our co-coms our commentators i've been butters you can catch me at my twitch at butterminer1245 i stream every sunday and randomly throughout the week (laughs) and uh and of course i've been debbie this isn't the last you'll see of me though you'll see me later um so i can do i will do a proper sign off later but uh for butters this was the last round for butters and we will be switching to cater and quark so stay tuned everybody for the next round of swiss we'll see you later Und goodbye
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Minnow Cup Tower Control Edition. I'm Cater, and I'm joined here today by Quark. Yes, I'm Quark, as Cater just said. And we're going to be starting off with Shark Reef versus Bamboo Dragons, and we're going to be going, I think, very soon into Piranha Pit Tower Control. Any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, this is the funky one. Every time I go on this map, I'm I, I keep thinking that the tower will go in the opposite direction that it actually does, and so it's really whack. It is. Always a fun map if you got a dynamo up on a ledge or something. We're going to see a pretty, very standard comp out of Shark Reef. We've got the K-52 play aggressive, the missile spam, the Nautilus is more of a midline roll, then the ray spam because who doesn't want to stop tower? As yeah. opposed to Bamboo Dragons, who's got running triple burst bomb, a, f a lot of chip damage on that comp, and they're going to have, I think, an advantage in close quarters fighting with that tri saucer because all the ledges here. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to see how this pans out for them. The triple burst bomb, like you mentioned, not something you see all the time, especially with the choices that V shot, not too common of a pick here, but I do like the pick of the Grim Range a lot. Although that uh, that missile placement, unfortunately, just a little bit, they didn't realize that Pigment was right there. And so that's going to be a delayed wipe on the side of Bamboo Dragons, meaning Shark Reef's going to take that tower and march it right up to that first checkpoint, though they're going to face a little bit of resistance. There's the ray, uh, offensive ray out, targeting the that blaster, blaster goes down unfortunately so does the remix so although they lose the tower uh it might not be for long although that inkjet um that inkjet's really important from shark reef actually really nice lets them take back that tower and they're likely going to make it through that first checkpoint as well yeah we're seeing bimbo dragons throw a lot of burst bomb get a lot of chip damage here but they've got to follow up on it and they're not really able to they're playing a bit scattered Rosado's going to go try to clean up one on the other side of the map instead of focusing mm -hmm. the tower will get picked up on the other side last year's forced to run with a bunch of missiles and it's looking like Bamboo Dragons could be at risk of being locked up, but Shark Reef took some losses there. Navies continue to try to move up, but Bamboo Dragons is managing to paint them enough. They're going to get some space, and Shark Reef is going to have to respect all this chip damage, because they don't. They will be pretty picked off. Missiles will yeah. come out in counter to the Ray, though I don't know if they're quite going to go through, and that's going to be an effective stalemate in mid now until Shark Reef will again hop on the tower. And, or Bamboo Dragons will hop on the tower. There's the splash down, and I think it got the pick as well. Navy's just holding on to this inkjet right now. There's the burst bomb from the, the not burst bomb. There's the booyah from the remix goes all the way over there on the left. So they're gonna be able to take the tower. Remix is riding right now, though they have to avoid the bombs. And with two down, their teammates three down. The remix goes down. That push is going to end right there. Unfortunately, that leaves the V shot on their own while their teammates come back for them. Yeah, the V shot's gonna play careful and just paint right now, which they mm -hmm. used to be doing. Good job to get some space. Those missiles might be coming out a little early, if anything, though the splatling will go down. That's going to be a nice opening for Shark Reef. Losing their Nautilus in turn. Sans here is trying to take the fight on the shot. Can probably win it, but no, they missed time with there. Can't go in for the burst bomb. Quick kill. And he's going to be forced to back up and pop a splash to get some space. I take out the Booyah bomb. Looks like the Booyah was shredded, even though they got the bomb off. Splashdown probably helped there. And now we've got Bamboo Dragons able to paint up and probably start taking more control, start pushing up. They've got yeah. the space to do it. They're just getting pinched from multiple directions. The tri is taking a 3v1. They don't think they know. They got the they got the armor out at least, which is really important. That's going to protect the heavy from the stingray. Uh, they pop the ray. The, they pop the booyah bomb. Gets the stingray, so that's really nice. But unfortunately, they go down as well to the 52, who gets another pick as well. That is a full wipe on the side of Bamboo Dragon. So that looked like it could have been really big, but unfortunately, things just didn't quite work out for them. And now we've got Yoshi with that booyah bomb right back in turn. Doesn't quite get anything, but we also have the jet. We have the missiles coming out as well. And there's another pick. So we have all of these. Specials coming out at the same time. Two more down on the side of Bamboo Dragons. Th make that another three down. The Splatling is the only one left, and you can see they're in a vulnerable position on these grades, forced to back up. That tower makes it two second checkpoint. And although they lose their Siege and their Nautilus, that Booyah Bomb is going to drive them back out. Oh, that's a three down, so it looks like the push will likely end there. Pigment's got to play it a little bit safer here. Yeah, we'll get called up by those burst bombs. Blaster's trying to find something. It's aimed a little low there. It's going to be enough to force the shot out of position. And now we've got Bimbo Dragon and Shark Reef team fighting on the right side. Yoshi goes down to a nice shot from Rosado. Missiles coming out to get push the advantage. One down on both sides. Ray coming out. They don't have any armor to counter. The Booyah Bomb's going to come out instead. We'll go right at the Ray. Maybe it'll connect. Maybe it won't. Looks like it won't, but it'll at least interrupt the Ray. Remember, Bamboo Dragons will go down. Another one going down. 2v4 situation now. Rosado's going to be caught on there already. I don't know what their teammate is, but... Oh. It seems like Rosado's been stuck a lot on their own a lot this match. The Tri-Sucks are getting one, looking for more. The pinch coming in from the 
Blaster, nice job to get two down onto Bam onto Shark Reef, rather. And now Bamboo Dragons is gonna be able to push up, but they've gotta paint up. They've gotta force this, really. Taking out Taco. The Ray's gone. They've got Splash Down. They've got all the resources they could need to make this push. They've just gotta execute. And so Splash Down coming out, getting another pick, taking out the shot, who's been the probably the biggest thorn in size. Look at the KA. Now this is the opening that Bamboo Dragons needs. Though it is a 2v2 situation, but Navy is in a is in a not great position here right now. Rosado's taking a lot of space. I think Bamboo Dragons could get the lead if they can get the picks here. They could, I mean, but unfortunately, it looks like their momentum stalled just a bit. Inkjet does go down, though, but they are two down. They're going to try and force overtime here. I don't know if they're going to... Ooh, that is rough. You can see the trees well, one there's... there. They unfortunately got pushed off. They got the pick, but they weren't able to get on in time. It does suck when you're this close to forcing overtime, and unfortunately, you don't get it. That is going to be our first match going to Shark Reef. Yeah, and that was a really good suction bomb. I think that was also Pigment there with that last second su suction bomb. Oh, in yeah. order to just stall tower for the extra two seconds it needed to be stalled in order to jump on. Yeah, I sometimes think... sometimes you just let your sh shot run rampant and it works. Yeah, I think Bamboo Dragons put up a really good fight there, but they just quite weren't quite able to capitalize off their chip damage enough to be able to move up. I'm not, could be a composition thing. Maybe if they had another thing like Blah Blah or an indirect fire weapon, as opposed to Splatling, they might have gone a little farther, but they might have, it probably would have been best if they'd played a little more together to be able to consistently, say one that we get a couple burst bombs and another one can finish off quickly, because that could have very well been a nightmare for Shark Reef to fight if they weren't careful. Yeah, I will say I love their, their way their Splatling was playing, and if they could play around that range, around the chip damage, like you were saying a little bit more, because we saw a lot of good potential from those, you know, the burst bomb, the blaster combo could work as well. Um, and especially, you know, because this whole thing is tower control, you can keep on bringing out that blaster. You just got to make sure that the chip damage is landing in the right places at the right times, because otherwise you're not going to get any actual picks, unfortunately. I think our next map is going to be a bit of a better one if Bamboo Dragons decides to continue to run the spotling, because last map was a bit cramped, but now we're moving to Wahoo World in which there's going to be very wide open sight lines for the spot line. The blaster is going to have plenty of room to play with. The same can be said for the Nautilus and Jet Squelcher on the side of Shark Reef, but I think it at least will make it a little l less hard for Zado to get in place and really start doing the damage that we know a spot like can do in situations like mm. this where they just have open sight lines. They can control so much space even if they can't. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's all, a couple of ledgers that you can use to your advantage here. We'll see. We've got the Dynamo coming out. So, okay, there's the Junior as well. So we've got armor, double armor now on the side of Bamboo Dragons with both that Tri and that Junior. We still have the Remix there. And then Taco's pulling out the Gold Dynamo Yoshi opting for a Neo Splash. And also, I believe that Capro's a switch too. Uh, we still have Pigment on the K-Shot, which is not surprising given how well he did last match. So we'll see what they decide. We'll see, I mean, if, if they can keep that up this match as well but we've already got the tower being taken very quickly, although we got the missiles coming out that's going to disrupt that pretty quickly. Unfortunately, Tri goes down. I don't, I couldn't tell if they got their armor off or not, but that could be really important, especially as Shark Reef advances on the tower now. Although, ooh, Navy does get taken down very quickly by that Junior, and so with two down, that doesn't get very far. So right now we're just seeing this tower. It hasn't moved past mid yet because people are trying to take it, but they do just get shut down by whoever is there. Missiles coming out yet again, and and so with the with armor getting popped, I know I think this side's also popping armor for the dead. Ooh, and there there is the opening that you need the two down. Very very nice right there. There's the armor. There's the missiles coming out, forcing the scattering and the backing off, and another armor. And this is what bamboo dragons really needed. This is the start to a push that could be really big for them. Even though their shots gone down, they can still keep the momentum up, especially with that booyah bomb coming out. But they'll have to watch for navy on the side here. Yeah, and the nice trade coming up there between Rosado and Navy. Now Shark Reef has to stabilize. They have stopped the push, but Bamboo Dragons is still in mid. Pigment taking the fight with the Slosher on the side of Bamboo Dragons. This looks like the the Slosher will be able to back off, it seems, safely. Oh no, they will go down. Taco keeping an eye on them and cutting off their escape route. But a member of, of Shark Reef will go down. Bamboo Dragons will be able to move out, taking another pick down. And they're doing so much better this match. They've been able to get the picks. They've been able to play aggressive the way they wanted. I don't know. The double armor is definitely helping. I think the more openness of the map is helping. So they're not constantly getting flanked by Shark Reef. But either way, 
They're doing a much better this job this map, just playing aggressive Whoa. getting picked. Yoshi picked off, I don't know, there were two people, I think they got baited by the jump and then there was a tri slosher there, which... And yeah, it just it happens. So appetizing, and then you realize you're getting jumped. <laughs> and now Pigment's going for flank, but they're going to be called out by the tri slosher It looks like Bamboo Dragons is getting a little wise to what Shark Reef has been trying to do. Rosetto managing to jump out there. There's the instincts of the anchor kicking in. And it looks like we've got Navy trying to take that tower of Pigment as well. Pigment goes down. That is unfortunate. And the Booyah, the, no, booyah I'm confusing all the sub-weapons today. The suction bomb is going to force, force Navy back just a little bit. We, they are able to take the tower, though, and so Shark Reef's gonna head up on the offensive here, but we've got the missiles coming out almost immediately to force them off that tower, and oh, just, uh, and then right after, Bamboo Dragon's gonna take that. So we're seeing a lot of quick back-and-forth passes from that tower. Unfortunately, with three down now on the side of Bamboo Dragons, the roller doing that cleanup work and calling out of this way, Shark Reef is going to have a lot of momentum, and they're gonna be able to jump on... I don't... Did, did you see that? How did the Dynamo Swing not kill the, kill the Splatling? I don't... I think that was an assist. I think someone else picked them off. I'm really not sure what happened yeah, there. Yeah, there was there was one swing that should have killed them, but I don't know. Sometimes sometimes the roller yeah, physics... Can happen. I don't know. Anyways, anyway. there's the checkpoint. There's the lead, and there is a lot of purple covering this map right now. You can see, I mean, Yoshi's already way up there. They do get crossfire down, unfortunately. Pigment as well. Navy's hiding there, doing a little bit of sharking. I don't know how long they're going to be able to last, and Taco tries to jump out. That is a full wipe, so they might have overextended just a little bit, but that get, did get them all the way to 35 and past that second checkpoint, which is really important if they decide to do another push after this. They're going to have to stop Bamboo Dragons first, so they already have that arm we're going into the fight, taking down Yoshi and likely gunning for whoever they can find next. You can see how much turf has already gone down. Junior going down, unfortunately, but there's still that second armor, and Rosado has that Booyah Bomb, so that all is really, really important, but unfortunately, they go down too, and so that is a, a quick three down, although it's not all at once, so those respawns are going to be a little bit staggered coming back in. Yeah, a lot of members of Bamboo Dragons keep getting caught out by the dynamo on the side of Shark Reef. I think it's been their main problem this match, especially looking at the KA. Taco's just been able to run around, get a lot of clean picks, and a lot of... cause a lot of chaos to spread the rest of their team. And now, remember, Shark Reef will go down, missiles are coming out in turn. Dynamo going down, which is gonna be critical here. Now, Bamboo Dragons have the opportunity to push up. They're getting the chip damage on. They're gonna be able to move up, but I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to really capitalize on this, considering that all the members of Shark Reef are already back. And now, Bamboo Dragons is gonna have to take this team fight and win it. We'll get a trade. They've still got a long way to go, they're looking for another one, but Endo, he's just so wet up, so exposed there, the rest of their team wasn't quite able to pinch in in time. Hopefully that suction boom gets the jump, for, at least for Boo Dragons, but it won't, they're gonna be at a dis disadvantage now. One member of Bang Boo Dragons is down, they're trying to fire into mid, but there's only two seconds and that will be the second game going to Shark Reef. Yeah, a lot more even of a fight there, especially with that great opening from Bamboo Dragons and all of the momentum they built up, but unfortunately, uh, Sharkery was just able to catch them out. I really, really liked the pick of the Dynamo here. You know, I don't necessarily think Dynamo when I see Wahoo World, but it worked out for them. The armor was able, the, I mean, the armor special, of course, we all know how good armor is, but also just the fact that they were able to use the huge swaths of ink to catch out those members unawares like you were talking about is really, va really valuable. And I'm surprised the Dynamo did as well as they did. Considering that generally, um, you will see, uh, Splatling versus Dynamo be very much in favor of the Splatling due to the longer range. But in this case, it wasn't, and the Dynamo was the one able to capitalize. Yeah, I mean, the, the matches of the ranges there, I do wonder if it was just a little bit more difficult for the Splatling to approach, given all of the ink that the Dynamo was putting down, and also the range of those swings, even the horizontal swings, are quite long, quite long range. All right, our third and final map is going to be Sturgeon Shipyard. So this one's a little bit more of one of those classic maps that you're, you're going to see Sturgeon Shipyard Tower in even, um, you know, <laughs> tournaments that aren't power control themed as this one is. And it's, it's one, it only has two checkpoints, but those two checkpoints are longer than those on the other maps. Uh, in my experience, what I've seen, it's really that, that second checkpoint that is really important because you're down in pit, you're surrounded by the enemy team, but if, you're, if you've got a really good hold on that tower, you can ride it out until then. Yeah, and it can snowball really quickly, like you said, but it's also, this could be a great, another great map for Dynamo. Taco can get up on those high 
slopes and ledges and just control so much area. Similar thing for Splatlings, they're going to be taking advantage of the great areas and just trying to peek out from behind the balls and get some easy picks that way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a former Splatling player myself, I can't count the number of times I've taken advantage of those greats and the, the just being able to peek out, get a pick, and then duck back behind one of the walls. It's very, very convenient. Yeah, and as for the rest of the members of um, Dark Reef, I think we'll see a fairly similar composition. I'm wondering if they'll bring up the K-52 to be able to deal with the uh, areas in the in the middle, we will not see the K-52. Instead, Splash coming out again for Yoshi, and then the Octo Shot coming out to the side of Boo Dragons, and a Hydra coming out for Shark Reef. We're seeing That's a lot of Splatlings. Good... Yeah, Hydra versus um, Remix is going to be a rough fight for the Remix, considering the range and damage of the Hydra. They're going to yeah. get close, and they're going to be reliant mm -hmm. on their Booyah, I think, to displace the Hydra. Yeah, that and also the mini putting down a lot of turf as well as the the burst bombs from them are going to be really damaging. So I lo I mean honestly the Hydra mini combo absolutely amazing. Uh, we can see the splash go down trade with the K50 not trade but for the K52 the remix goes down. Oh, that is an unfortunate 3 down um pretty early on in the match. So if that means Shark Reef is going to be the first to take the tower. We still have a living member but they unfortunately do get found out under there and get picked off before. I think they were trying to do something sneaky but unfortunately just didn't work out. Yoshi, oh my goodness, the aggression. Unfortunately, they are punished for it. So a little bit of overextension for Shark Reef there, but it is still working out for them as that tower is continuing to move forward. You can all see the placement of mines on the tower, really a classic move by the Hydra there. Pigment on that inkjet, really, really nice placement there. That special is really important to clearing out some space, putting down a little bit more ink, and you can already see they're past that second checkpoint, down to 19. There is a lot, a lot of momentum behind this one push right now, and they're still still going. They still have a presence here. There's the armor from the Hydra uh, when pops soon. If they pop it soon, oh, unfortunately, they're not going to because all their teammates are done. But I was going to say it could have had a huge effect on that, so they're going to hold on to it until all their teammates come back. Yeah, now we've got the first attempt at a counter push for Bamboo Dragons. They've got to get back in the mid first. They popped the Booyah, but they're one down. They don't have a 52 right now, so they're going to lose a lot of their aggression. And now two members more of Bamboo Dragons will go down. Shark Reef is going to be... Continuing to posture aggressively, they've got the Hydra. It's a 2v2 situation, but they have all the map control, so they can be aggressive as if maybe wasn't quite so balanced of a situation. Now, they're going to overextend. Bamboo Dragons will pick one of them off. One member of Bamboo Dragons going down in turn, though. And Bamboo Dragons is still stuck. Shark Reef er, is going to be able to continue to hold mid. Bamboo Dragons won't really be able to move in. And Shark Reef isn't really trying to push this too hard. They're just content to kind of hold it. And they will get three down. That's going to open this up. They could, if they can get the specials, their specials up here, they could KO. They are clear close. Out this to rat too. And they Whoa. go down. An excellent play right there. Yeah, try. Really, really nice job from them. You can see they're taking full advantage of their slusher heap abilities here. Yoshi are trying to get something done. Splash wall, I mean, does its job and walls them off, though. And so they're not able to get any picks from that getting picked off themselves in turn. Bamboo Dragons is finally able to get their hands on that tower and a little bit of more positioning in mid. We've got the Booyah coming out as well as the armor, um, although that does get broken down pretty quickly, especially that Hydra is going to shred right through. Tries doing their best, does get that turn around, get that really nice pick before getting picked off themselves. Tower's still moving, but not for long. We've got a lot of members down, though, and so I think with all of those people down, I mean, you know, you can see a little bit more isolated fights, Pigment taking, picking off that one person, and so Push gets to 71, that first checkpoint, before getting stopped. Yeah, and Shark Reef again is able to take a very offensive stance. Getting one nice pick, looking for the second. Won't quite find it, but yeah, they will. Nice. There's plenty of chip damage right there. Yeah, Pigment getting to the third going down. Tri Slosher playing behind enemy lines. We'll get taken out as well. And again, Shark Reef is going to play for the KO here. They're going to be able to push this. And now they'll get some more picks. One going down on their side, though. And Shark Reef is almost the KO. They're not quite getting. Oh, they will get it. That will be the 3 0 for a Shark Reef against Bamboo Dragons. Yeah, there it is. This one was a dominant game. I think. Once they got a hold of that mid, once they started getting, you know, that that first big push is really important because once you get that, you are fired up. And the sheer amount of control I saw from this Hydra was 
really impressive just because they were able yeah i mean you saw the, the range that they exercised you mentioned at the beginning it's going to be rough for the heavy remix and unfortunately it was just because the sheer range of that hydra once you have them in your sight lines they're going to get you before you have you can get in range to get them yeah it effectively kind of locked down Bamboo Dragon's backline because they couldn't do anything and then they lost that support because there was just a Hydra overshadowing everything. And they did seem to be getting out painted as well. So from that it just snowballed pretty quickly. If yeah. I think if we had seen something else from Taco, maybe say Dynamo, this could have been very different or another less devastatingly long range backline. But the Hydra just enabled the rest of Shark Rear to play so aggressively and take so much space. Yeah, and with that, like you said, that's going to do that for our fourth round. So I believe we'll take a break of just a couple of minutes and we'll be right back at you guys with our fifth round of Swiss. We'll see you then.
Hello everybody, welcome back to Minnow Cup Tower Control Edition. We are back with round five of Swiss. This is our last round before we go into Top Cut. So yeah, I'm Cater and I'm joined here today by Quark. Yes, and to finish off this Swiss stage, we're going to be seeing Freelancing Takayaki. This is Aquatic Vanguard and we'll be starting on Infla Art Academy Tower Control. Like oh, everything, okay. everything's Tower Control. I'm shocked. Wow, well, I didn't know that. That I, I had no idea that we were signing up for an all all tower control tournament. It's Where not like it was in the name. Wow, what a coincidence! All right, there's the brush. You were talking about that. I like brushes. Okay, there's a dynamo. We're seeing another dynamo. Although this one's a Kenza dynamo. It also has thermal ink. Um, <laughs> you know what? To each their own. I, I guess because dynamo swings don't always one shot. Not not something that I would think about a lot. But I guess that's that's fair. Sure. Yeah, that's a different brush that I mentioned because this is the brush from this is I, or rather this is Aquatic Vanguard's player Ike It's Twig who I was talking about earlier before we went on <laughs> who's the uh, brush and charger two trick Always a fun player to play with this is a different brush because who doesn't need more than one brush main on the team And anyway, we're gonna see an early scrap in mid. No one's really gotten anywhere Oof. Take granted it's a Tiaki who got like and now they're getting somewhere. They're gonna get three down They're gonna be looking for that brush dynamo using gets vertical. It's Range to clear out the area. The brush is gonna get behind them. the dynamo. Is just Whoa. not coming in today. Oh goodness! No. That sure is a way to assert your dominance over the other half of the roller class, I guess. Uh, looks like that Buya was aiming for somebody, but they got taken down before the Buya even went off. And we are already seeing momentum behind this push. There is the bomb rush. Yeah, and there's the armor as well. Already they are past that second checkpoint. Brush is gonna jump down. Dynamo's trying to take them out again. The brush is coming from behind. Ooh. Dynamo just doesn't manage to swim away fast enough, so that is one point for the brush. And it looks like they're off the tower as well. I don't know if there's still- there is still a slight presence there though, unfortunately. I think that might be cleaned up or forced out by the brush. So that push does stop, but not before it gets to a healthy 31, which is very nice. Yes, and now Aquatic Vanguard's got the chance to get, take this back. They've got multiple specials. They already got paint on half a mid, so they can move up pretty safely. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be able to go with the inkjet early. But they're gonna lose a member in the process, and the inkjet's not really gonna know where to shoot, it seems like. Just kind of lobbing some shots at members. Ah, they they will go. get a pick, but they will get picked off in the process. 2v2 situation now with both dynamos holding space. There's... And then another member of each team just trying to help them out, and now. I, I didn't notice there were two dynamos. I don't know how I didn't yeah. notice. There sure are two of them. There are actually mirrors besides that. Freelancing Takiyaki yeah. has got a splash, and Aquatic Finger has got a brush. I mean, That's both, pretty both similar. playing work pretty well, kind of slightly off meta. They still got the Booyah Bomb to get the stops and all the defensive part of Dynamo. And now Francis Takiyaki is going to pop the Booyah onto the tree, getting themselves in space, missiles coming out as well. They're going to want to throw in the dancing around, a nice trade coming out. Oh my goodness. They're going for the pick and only going to trade because of how well that member of Freelance and Takiyaki was paying attention. Now Aquatic Vanguard is... Okay, it looks like they're pushed away for forward, but they're actually very much on the defense. Throwing in a booyah bomb to try to spell tower, but looks like they're just worried about someone being in the right stack and wasn't really going there. Dynamo fight oh. now, and OBT will miss the initial flicks. Now, Andy on freelancing Takiyaki is going to be able to land the definitive flick and win that fight. And now, Quantic Vanguard is still going to be trapped in the defensive, trying to push out. So the Dynamo the Ver right now. The Ar Dynamo Ar Vertical and Flick is the last thing you see before you die. Yes. And now, looks like we just got another scrap in mid. And freelancing Takiyaki is going to continue to hold it, getting two members down, three members down yet again, and the brush is going to get caught out on their own yet again. Yeah, despite all of these, like like you said, these little scrappy mid fights that we've been seeing, it is freelancing Takoyaki that has been coming out on top a lot of the time. I mean, we saw that in the Dynamo fight, we've been seeing in a lot of these drop downs. The brush coming from the the same side again, managing to catch, catch a member off guard before they are taken out themselves. There come the missiles, so there's a lot of green in mid for Aquatic Vanguard now, but it is getting painted over as quickly as they can. Looks like the, they're going to try and take this tower, but immediately get taken out, and then the Dynamo gets taken out in turn. So we've got a lot of, tr of kill for kills going down, but finally Brush is going to hop on, though they do get threatened immediately. We've got gems coming to them. They're going to pop that inkjet looking for a pick. They do get that with the help of the Booyah. Looks like they're going to try and pick off that dynamo, but the inkjet will expire before either of them has a chance to do anything about it, which could be good because I think that dynamo was in a very good position to take out that inkjet had they been given a couple more seconds. 
Yeah, we got Aquatic Vanguard taking a bit more offensive stance. Can you get an ice pick? Oh my goodness! Oh, coming out, the splash wow. damage you're getting against Pumachan, either they'll go down. And there's only one member of Freelancing Takayaki left. Aquatic Vanguard's got a good chance to push, but they're still wing members to get in. They're gonna take their jumps fast, and OBT's gotta win this fight. Won't win it. Will instead have watch their teammate get picked off. They're gonna be forced to pop a Booyah Bomb. They're gonna have to throw it at their feet, and they'll go down in turn. And it looks like a member of Freelancing Takayaki took a... Went for a swim right there. Now Aquatic Vanguard's only gonna get to 62. They're gonna get picked off now. Ike watching and getting in another one. They're gonna have to back off here though, because there's a bomb coming in. And now it's really just a scrappy fight in mid. But oh. Aquatic Vanguard doesn't have the players in place to really take advantage of any of the chaos that got caused. Instead's gonna get surrounded by friends and Takayaki and will not make it to tower on time. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, that could have amounted to something. I don't even know what picked that shot off. And just that end, kill for kill for kill in that small section of that small corner right over there so that was a chaotic match but it is going to be freelancing takayaki coming out on top yeah we saw and jake and set of friends and takayaki are doing a great job dynamo clearly was playing very aggressively and both teams had such similar columns it just felt like freelancing takayaki was a little more aggressive at the right times and in the right places and then aquatic vanguard just kept getting caught out Especially, I think their brush might have, if anything, been trying to flank too too much or take too long of flanks that they always just got called out and were always there after the rest of their team was down instead of moving at the same time in their team to cause a bit of a pincer or such. Thanks. Yeah, those flanks did seem to work out them a couple of times, but it also did kind of seem like they were a little bit left on their own after those flanks, which was really unfortunate because it left it open for them to get picked off after, which kind of nullified the kill almost. It did, because yeah, you take a tree and nothing happens. You don't really get anything, it's just 33 now instead of 44. And maybe one of you comes back faster because a quick respawn. And with yes. that, we're going to be moving on to Humpback Pump Track Tower Control. This yeah. is going to be a doozy. Yeah, especially if those dynamos come back. Because, like, I mean, given those the accuracy of those flicks that we saw previously, imagine how much damage those horizontal flicks can do here. So much. It's going to be... The brush is going to be a field day here because all the ledges and curved areas they are going to control a lot more space than maybe on Inkblot where you've got a lot of space in mid to fight, but after that, it's just ledges that people, there's a few of them, people know where you're going to be coming, they're going to know where you're going to try and hit and you're going to get called out. This might be a better match map for Aquatic Vanguard if they keep the same players because they've got a lot of people in their roster and, and really on both sides, both teams have a lot of players they could be subbing in right now. Not sure if they are, but... Might be a good idea if they've got any tries or other sloshers to bring out too for this map. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, we all know how sloshers are on this map, but the dynamo can work here, especially since we saw it on both teams. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it out again. It looks like we are seeing a switch to a rapid pro. Um, we are also having the junior come out, otherwise, comps are relatively similar. Yeah, but that like... rapid, that rapid pick. I'm eyeing that rapid because I like that pick. Yeah, they've got the vanilla rap rapid press. So they've got mist and rain. They're gonna be able to control a lot of space with that weapon. Looks like they maybe want to play a little bit slower. Maybe I, I feel like I've seen them before, and they're more like a midline player. I think they might be a bit more comfortable with that weapon. So I think that'll help Aquatic Vanguard. And well, it is because they're they're getting the initial push. They'll lose a member, but I think that blast is gonna help them a lot in taking space and they'll get another pick. And now. The Dynamo is going to keep trying to fight for Freelancing Takayaki. We'll get picked off in that 3v2 situation. And nice pick there coming out, but Ike's going to clean it up. Another trade going down. This time Aquatic Vanguard's going to be the only trade that's somewhat advantageous to work. So they're going to be the control space. But not at the Junior push up when there's only a Blaster and another member up for Aquatic Vanguard because suddenly all the paint control is going to shift straight to Freelancing Takayaki. And now they're going to be able to push, popping the missiles on the Dynamo player and one other. And now. Being able to move up, miss getting missile back in turn, but looks like if they can get the armor off here and maybe get another special online and that pick, that should be sufficient for them to aggress, oh. especially with that trade coming out, the dynamo going down. 
Yeah, I mean, again, those dynamos, the horizontal flicks, we, I mean, we saw earlier the physics of those can be a little bit janky, but they put down so much ink, yeah, I mean, it, it, the chip damage can be really, really important there. Janky, they're getting one pick admirably in that, I think it was a, almost a 2v1, 3v1 before going down, and still freelancing Takoyaki is keeping up the push. They have the Buya as well as the armor at the ready, and their teammates, they're still managing to keep a presence around tower, um, just given how this map is built, it's not too difficult to do that, but still, that is still really important. They looks like they are relinquishing control of that for now, but they're going to take it right back. Pop that Booyah as well. On the other side, we have the Storm. As well, you can see the mist coming out, some mist coming out on the tower, too, so that is going to slow the progress down. But nonetheless, I mean, okay, it looks like that, that Booyah was specifically for somebody, and it did the work, ate through that armor, and that is really important. Yeah, we saw Aquatic Vanguards expended rain and armor to get back into mid and have a chance to fight. But then they're going to immediately, they lost one before the armor really got came out line and then they lost another trying to continue to aggress with the armor down a member and now we see the thermal link coming into the dynamo here letting them aim those vertical flicks with some accuracy able to try to put a little more pressure than maybe just flicking kind of guessing would accomplish onto your opponents and now for the takyaki is going to be able to push up again they're going to be looking to try to extend their lead break that second checkpoint to make this a little more secure because both teams have broken the first checkpoint. So Aquatic Vanguard could pretty easily, with a nice push, get the lead back like we're seeing them trying to do now. They're not quite in the position to take back a lead, but they're in the position to paint up and get into this map. But OBT is going to get flanked, a nice thing. Plank comes out, and both longer range weapons of Aquatic Vanguard are now down. So the other two members are probably going to get the shark and throw bombs until they can find an opening. And they're going to manage to take out the splash. Good pick there. Andy's jumping in, swinging their dynamo down. They're going to look for something. Takes Ooh, one out. Nice. And that's going to be really important. Now with the more aggressive members of Black Finger, it feels like each of their fighting pairs is just collapsing in turn. And they're getting staggered. And now oh another nice split coming out. They You can see their target. They're going to target the dynamo with that Booyah Bomb. Not going to quite find it, but still very nice cutting off that path. They are using these jumps to their advantage. There's the Thermal Ink coming into play. I mentioned that earlier, I think. And very, very nice cut catching them just at the end of that. You can see they're jumping in right here. These vertical flicks are going to be are really, really important because they extend so far. And you can still get a good amount of damage at the very tip. Don't know if that Booyah Bomb was meant to be on the tower or if it was meant to be over it. But nonetheless, it's still put down some ink. And that dynamo is still very much alive and kicking jakey here very very uh, aggressive gonna get one pick and looking for another on the rapid unfortunately they do get taken down just because of all the chip damage but this tower is still going they're trying to extend the lead that they have we have less than a minute remaining right now you can see the blaster here i think painting probably to try and get the storm to drive the members of freelance and takoyaki back and get a little bit more paint on the ground that's what is happening here and it does work they get the one pick on the junior which is pretty important although there's still going to be a lot of paint going down for freelancing takoyaki if they're not careful that forced jump out too is also pretty important and so now they're going to be able to take that tower and move it forward past where they have so they can they can try and get it to that checkpoint there but it is going to be a struggle and the booyah bombs out they're gonna just have to run away from tower for a bit or try to hold it and it will actually work because they're gonna get some other picks elsewhere but now they forced to have one member run back for the tower almost certainly it's gonna be the lead here but riley's gonna be forced but the dynamo doesn't quite know they're coming they're not oh my goodness it's gonna be a, a lead by one point for freelancing takiyaki letting them take the set it's so close. I mean, you get within. Oh my goodness! You get within one point, and then your whole team gets wiped, and you just kind of know that you can't get back in. And yeah. it, that oh, that hurts. But yeah, oh my goodness, so Dynamo plays like, wow. What happened there was that Ike should have. They had the space. I don't know if they knew, but I, obviously it's easier to say when you're just watching the thing. Stepped off the tower for a second while the booyah bomb came in and not died and then they could have either if their team hadn't got that advantage and taken all its members out ha kept helping force the tower through or just yeah. cleanly read it to light and then I guess Riley just didn't see the last one coming because we've seen how deadly Andy's been with that dynamo just oh, yeah I mean of course like a sniper rifle yeah and then <laughs> It's a lot easier for us to say things as, these things as comms, just as we can see. Like, I mean, I know if I were in that position, I'd be focused on keeping the tower alive. You know, sometimes you just don't see that all your other teammates are there in a bad position. Sometimes you just don't see that you have the space to jump off, like you said. And unfortunately, things just happen to just happen like that. 
to this and then... I hate to see it. Yeah, I really liked the Bluster pick. I think that was very good to see something a bit different, because usually the only map you see Rapid Probe usually is when people are like, Oh, that's uh, new Albacore, time to bring out the Rapid Pro because they're yeah. long sight lines. Yeah, I was gonna say long sight lines and wall and, you know, whichever one you bring out, the, the wall or whatever. Like, you know, you know oh, 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 the funny Albacore stage, oh, oh. but like you said, to see it here was really nice. Yeah, now we're gonna be moving to Skipper Pavilion, which is an interesting oh, yeah. map on tower control because you're pushing, it's an up, it's a literal uphill battle here. You've got to push <laughs> up a series of platforms and to get on to really play aggressive onto the higher platforms when you're trying to get past the second checkpoint, you've either got to stay in the tower until it gets about where you need it to jump, but put, and put yourself at more risk that way to play more aggressive, or you've got to walk across the uh, uninkable and that's equally dangerous. So I think missiles are going to be really important here another special that people aggress and same call for the first game coming out of Aquatic Event and Guard. We've got a squeezer coming out for Freelancing Takiyaki, which is a really good thing. Considering the smaller gaps, you're going to have to push up on this map to really get aggressive. Bubbles are going to be so helpful in letting them push up and be aggressive here. Yeah, I will say also the range of those tap shots combined with the range of the Vertical's Dynamo Flicks, that is kind of scary because you could be picked off by, I mean, at a really long range by the combination of these two weapons. Andy, though, in a little bit of a difficult position uh, forced in by the other Dynamo, going to go down pretty early as well. And the brush has been point censored, but they're still going to... Um, Put, put up uh, some turf on the middle section over there. Towers going forward is at that first checkpoint. There are the bubbles from the squeezer, and there's also a booyah bomb there. So looks like <laughs> those are nice picks from that squeezer. You love to see the insta pop picks because they can work out so nicely. And just like that, that tower has reset back to mid, and it's going to be freelancing Takoyagi trying to pick it up. Although the squeezer on their own is likely going to have to wait just a, a couple of seconds for their other teammates to jump in and join them. Yeah, like I said, we have a V Dynamo on the side of Freelancing Takayaki. Probably they're switching to that because of the more elongated nature of the tower pass and how there's just more space for Ray to be really deadly here. They won't have quite the instant tower stopping of a whole Booyah Bomb, but they'll still have the Bomb Rush in reserve for that, and they're going to have the ability to put a lot of pressure on range, even if they don't have missiles. With that combined with being able to push up with bubbles and armor, I think they're going to be just fine in terms of aggression. And now we've got yeah. Freelancing Takayaki looking for picks. We'll lose one instead. And a nice flank coming up, getting to oh. taking a disadvantaged situation into an even fight. Now we've got the Dynamo fight coming right up. But Andy's in a bad spot, just forced to jump out. OBT doing a great job controlling that height and using it to their best advantage. And now Freelancing Takayaki is still looking for a pick. push. They've got one more. They've got one more point on the board than Aquatic Vanguard. And they're looking to extend it. X limits to be forced into a not great situation. The another team member will confirm the trade, but now it's going to be a 2v2 situation. And Aquatic Vanguard is going to be the ones taking the tower. And Ike is going to get an excellent off angle there to take down a member of Freelancing Takayaki. I mean, yeah, we've seen the towers just trade between these two checkpoints a very small distance in comparison to the whole map. And, you know, just as it looks like it's about to go a little bit further, this ray comes out and just demolishes the tower. But the brush also goes slap, 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 puts out those missiles, too. And I wonder if they're going to be able to utilize their beacons at all. They are really deep in enemy territory right now. Going to camp this ledge a little bit. They have to watch out for the bombs. But this is a really effective place for this brush to be such a nuisance, although they unfortunately do get taken out. But still, they are letting their teammates um, come to them, opening up these doors for their teammates to, to still have this presence on the tower. And even though it's a 2v2 fight, 3v3 now with the respawns, they still are in a great position to hopefully keep the momentum going. Although with freelancing Takayaki being able to paint up the area around, take the tower back, it does look like the push has stopped, especially with the addition of this ray right on top of that. Yeah, and really good push by Freelance Attack, or rather by Aquatic Vanguard there to get the lead here. And now they've got a column for it. they've got the beacons, they've got the missiles and the booyah. They can afford to play, play defensively and can, the beacons are the, give them a lot of mobility options to take some off angles and just hold out Aquatic Vanguard and or rather Freelance Takiyaki in a lot of not great places. Bubbles will come out to not much, but they'll create enough space. Wolf getting an excellent pick, going for the triple, I think they'll find it, and they will find the triple going off taking those members of freelancing takiyaki by surprise i don't know 
but they're caught another fight now quite vengeance gonna get another chance to push up look for some more points on the board they don't really need them but they want to keep moving forward so that freelancing takayaki is stuck on the defensive instead of having giving freelancing takayaki the space to uh start building up their specials and start preparing a push nice pick from jakey here they're gonna be trapped up the dynamo though the dynamo is gonna be taking an angle somewhere else now they're gonna go straight in though i don't know if they knew quite what was coming and that's and the teammate will save them before they're crossfired by multiple members of <laughs> aquatic finger and now it's their turn to try to get the lead here they can't they definitely can't we've seen how well they can play oh absolutely they've got a long way to go and they've got to have a pop a bit of a pop off here i think mm -hmm. we've got the ray coming out gets a couple of hit markers but doesn't quite get anything unfortunately and it looks like we're gonna have the classic mine on tower before the dynamo decides to opt for a brute up mid here meanwhile the squeezer has their bubbles they can definitely use this especially with the uh the areas like this that are coming oh the the booyah forcing them into a little bit of a tight situation though i think they tried to get that bubble over the the um the the ledge but it didn't quite work out for them we have about eight seconds left no one's on the tower yet so freelancing takiyaki is going to do their best to take it the armor pushes them off the tower we have a jump onto the tower but it's just not going to arrive quick enough unfortunate yeah wow the critical thing there was that obt oh. goes went in picked off one member of freelancing takiyaki before they could finish like stabilizing after that fight and then took a creep, went all the way back around them, got behind them, and forced another member to break off and fight them for a few seconds, which gave the rest of their team enough time to push up and clear the tower and just the armor then. You had to pop it because otherwise you're going to die, but the tower knockback just was a little too much for a freelancing Takayaki. Yeah, well a great set to watch and that is going to end our swiss uh swiss portion of the tournament we're going to be heading into top cut next but before we head to that break we do have something to show you guys because it's really cool it's a very nice announcement so um as you can see on on the screen i am i cannot i cannot find the blurb i there was something for me yes. to read i'm very sorry i'm looking for it right now Ah, I found it. All right, so you guys, you should get ready for the biggest little Squid League event yet. LSL 20 is going to be happening on May 28th and 29th, and it's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, and this two-day event is comprised of a starting prize pool of $500 and the chance for you and your team to become title, the title holder when it is amongst some of the most iconic teams in low level. Signs will close on May 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information, head over to the LSL Discord. Yep, all of that information is on the screen, and I hope to see you guys there because this is going to be a really cool event. Um, and now with that, we are going to be taking a break of just a couple of minutes before we come back with Top Cut. So we'll see you guys then.
Hello everybody, welcome back to Minnow Cup Tower Control Edition. We are live with Top Cut right now, if you are just joining us. I'm Cater and I'm joined here today by Quark. Yes, and we're going to be seeing Lima Limon versus Waiting on Our Force, which uh, sounds like an NA scrim everywhere, doesn't it? It sure does. And also, uh, according to the country code they've listed, Lima Limon is from Argentina. I didn't know the researchers down there played Splatoon, but... You mean Antarctica? You said Argentina. Oh my god, I said Argentina. I meant to say Antarctica. Wow, I screwed up the joke that I was planning. No, but I didn't mean to say Argentina. I didn't know the researchers down there played Splatoon, but you learn something new every day, I guess. I mean, Argentina, Antarctica, same hemisphere of the world, same thing, right? I mean, if I say- totally. if They're both down relative to me. Oh, E-leader. Oh, and we've got an interesting comp coming out from when our force was built. Another dynamo, we've been seeing that all day. And in oh, the yeah. room range, they're going to have a lot of ability to indirect fire on tower. The E leader, which has already hit a shot. Uh, Asa, from everything I've heard, is very good. So I'm expecting a lot of nice shots. The Dynamo is probably going to have a huge headache the entire match. Because E leader has yeah. got so much tight line here. This is how you counter a Dynamo. Just just play it. To play a charger yeah thumbs up <laughs> but really i mean like you said we've been seeing the, those dynamos a lot and there there is another one of those flicks we got the booby bomb and the tenda missiles coming out from waiting on our fourth and they're gonna take that tower drive it forward looks like they're uh gunning for that first checkpoint right now the one over the water so uh, maybe somebody will go for a swim uh, you can see the uh that sniper there the leader just aiming for whoever is on the tower not quite getting the shot on them, but they have man they managed to stall the tower for just a little bit. We have two down now on waiting on our fourth, which is good, likely going to stall that push for a little bit. Uh, oh, the Nautilus, unfortunate. That is an unfortunate fate to suffer at the hands of a dynamo. Yeah, and we're seeing waiting on our fourth kind of getting, they are getting the early push here. They got missiles coming out. They've got, we all know ready, but they're going to be a member down, so they're not really going to be able to get too aggressive here. At least until they can jump up. But as I say that, another member goes down. The Booyah just kind of thrown out. I might have been a panic, but either way, it was definitely wasted. Didn't really get anything there. As I narrowly miss his death. Brain coming out right after the missiles. Good timing from the Lily Monk. Ancient coming as well. Excellent special coordination. Able to get one pick and clear a whole lot of space. This oh, is yeah. Um, three down now. Playing off of the space the specials created. And once a few more bombs. Flying tower, a little more paint gets on the ground. They can get a lot. They can get up onto that upper area and really get aggressive here. Looks Except like they're just flying from behind. Ooh, I was gonna say, it looks like what that's what they're going for, but the flank takes them at the suction bomb as well, and just like that, they are three down with the shot being the only one, and I think they've jumped out. So the, how the turns have tabled very, very quickly there, just one flank can change a lot. We've got the Dynamo here painting up for their team. Blaster is down, but they will be back in just a second. That tower resets back to mid, and with the armor as well as the, uh, the, the, the missiles and the Booyah Bomb, and missiles from the other side as well, a lot of specials, both teams are trying to break back into mid here. Yeah, it's interesting you know, that even as the leader got um, Booyah Bomb, the missile still caps the members of, Lilo, of waiting on our force back enough so that Lima Limon did not use that much pressure th for them. And now they've still got lead and they are down, but Lima Limon's in a good place to defend here, especially getting another pick. The leader is still set up, just waiting to fire at anyone who dares peek around that tower a little too much and now Jay's got another ink shot up looking for something and we'll almost find the one in midair that would have been a beautiful shot but <laughs> yeah, but it is try. Shot. Oh, yeah it's all oh, it doesn't hurt to try well, like you said it would have been such a good oh yeah I mean you're gonna be seeing a lot of those with the e-leader and uh, off the map? I thought they, I, they almost went off the map <laughs> we almost, the almost went off the map I didn't know that. I didn't know bombs could do that. Was I? Was it? Was it they an armor armored. break, or did they just? Yeah. Get off? They got armored. They were armored. The bomb went off. And they were like a distance unit away from getting thrown off the map. <laughs> oh, that would have been so funny if they actually got thrown off the map. Well, I guess the some deity of Splatoon has decided to be merciful to them, but you gotta watch out when you when you are armored and there are bombs about. We do have relatively close scores here. Neither team has reached that second checkpoint yet, and we've got about just over a minute left. We have the missiles forcing a couple of jump outs. Dynamo going down, and there is a lot of yellow down from Lima Limon. You can see uh, the, the mines out, as well as that storm, too, covering a lot of ground. 
and they they're trying to push what they already have forward they get to that checkpoint and they're going to try and make their way through you can see the sniper nicely positioned to watch over this tower as well as that um the jump over the water there not quite getting the shot but they are at least painting lines so that their teammates have a lot more ink to swim through and meanwhile waiting on their fourth is going to let loose that booyah bob from the dynamo i believe and uh lima limon's going to shoot right back with all of those missiles yeah i really like asa's position especially if she's there using Ooh. the rain to keep space but like continue to try to get aggressive and then holding out on that top hill area for long enough for their entire team to come back take the fight now that's enabled Lima Limon to start pushing up more aggressively to they've got missiles and inkjet online they're gonna be able to get real aggressive your armor coming in as well they could push this to the third checkpoint but they don't even need to because that's gonna be the game with Lima, Lim Lima Limon taking the first game in the set and like you could see the inkjet at the very end just kind of sitting on the tower bouncing up and down but yeah that is our first match 66 to 33 those are those are nice numbers to have as an end score but there you go and double digit ka all of lima limon that is quite impressive poor little um or the grim range bother rat there it looks like they only got they didn't get an ak that's really unfortunate bad, but... Leave me alone just did I think that's an awkward comp to have to fight with this blaster though, because you're either getting aggressed or you're just getting chargered and that just speaks it's not a detriment to how well that blaster player played, it just speaks to how well Lima Lumon was controlling space. Cause mm -hmm. they had so much paint on the ground, it was just difficult for someone like say you're playing blaster, it's just hard to move and do anything. Yeah, just because blaster doesn't oh it's just really can't quite paint for itself it does rely on its teammates to produce that just a little bit so when you are up against just all of that turf control as well as the charger putting down lines it is really difficult to move around and take advantage of the space you had all right we are moving on to our second map this set is best of three and i'm going to forget that <laughs> so hopefully i don't best of three instead of play all three but we've got mako uh this is the bread and butter of the splatoon 2 community although we're not on zones we are on tower but still this one's pretty common yes as everyone says about mako might ever when they're in stream it's a good map if you've got a rush down weapon it's a good map for any weapon too but especially you've got a tri slosher you've got a carbon roller got a luna blaster dapples etc Play yep. around those stacks, get a little bit of off angle, and you just need to pop out of nowhere, and it's really easy to do it, and you get a pick. I do so. think we'll be seeing the, the leader back, since they did have a good amount of success the last match. They don't have as many purge points as they do on a snapper necessarily, but there's still a lot of places that they can, like you, they, they can be, like you said. And there is, there's the leader. Like you said, it's a pretty good uh, map for any weapon. Is that a vanilla sloshing machine? Oh my goodness, I that love that That is. We're going to have a ray coming up. Ooh. Yeah, it's a good weapon here. It's going to be able to get into all those sludges and... Between its main weapon, I don't know if it's point sense. No, it's auto bomb for the sub, and the, it, is a, it is. I mean, the ray. It's yeah. gonna be a headache level of chip damage, especially the dynamo. It's just gonna depend on. Yeah. Every time they're gonna keep painting it, and the, the K shot's really gonna have to be very aggressive here. But if they are, I think this could be very difficult for Lima Limon if all the chip damage comes in. Lima yep. Limon, on the other hand, is just gonna hold their range out and use the leader and the Nautilus to get space. Yeah, I am realizing I haven't heard about Machine in a while. Like, did the community just kind of over start, like, stop playing Machine or something like that? But anyways, I really like seeing it. I'm very, very excited about this machine, especially since I used to, like, basically live and die by this weapon. It's so, so much fun to play. But meanwhile, we have the Limon pushing up. They've got that first checkpoint. It looks like it's going to go down without too much resistance. Really, really nice that the Inkjet taking uh, all of this control in this upper area here. Doesn't look like they're going to quite get the pick, but still, they've put down a lot of ink. Uh, a lot of asserted a lot of control and they're almost almost at that second checkpoint not quite gonna touch it yet they have a little bit of presence around the tower but with all of the paint that waiting on a fourth puts down especially with that pick on the junior that looks like that push is going to stop there here we do situation right here it looks like members are respawning on both sides but our fourth has a bit of has map control bench, but remember they're just gonna get sniped and that's gonna be their main aggressor, the K-Shot. Now Safra's just stuck sitting here, waiting for their teammate to finish jumping in so they can pop the Booyah Bomb and get off aggressive because the sniper's watching. Missile's coming in to counter the armor. Asa taking a nice shot. I don't know if that cracked the armor, but either way that was a good position to take to kind of put pressure on. Now two members have waited on our fourth group and on. Lima Lamon is just gonna push up and start looking for some more stuff. The leader is gonna take a, that wide open set on the left. 
left in order to keep their team from being able to the enemy team rather from being able to take that off angle and now the one is getting really aggressive we got lapping here taking the flank knowing they're against a junior so that they can take the aggressive position with their longer range and he's just gonna hold that right side forcing the dynamo out we'll pick them too the rain at least Waiting on our fourth is just kind of stuck right now between all the different ways they're being pressured for. They will finally take out Lappy and open some space up for them to stall things. It looks like they did well that was going on. They did a pretty good job stalling the tower since Nemo the one didn't even get to where the first checkpoint would be. Or rather, a little past where the first checkpoint would be. Yeah, the stalling was good because even though they were locked in, the I mean, the objective didn't really move as much as probably as much as Lima Limon would have wanted it to, and that in the end is what matters here. We've got waiting our fourth with the booyah bomb trying to do things, but I think the combination of the sniper and just some rush down weapon made that not possible. And we've got the storm out as well, so that is going to dissuade waiting on our fourth from immediately pushing back up onto that tower. So I mean, we've got solid control around the tower. Well, not around the tower, but we have solid control for the limon right now though this mid getting a little bit more speckled with that purple paint uh, we have Lima limon just backing up just a little bit allowing waiting on our fourth to take a little bit more space but not that much they have the missiles out they have the booyah as well but they're still they feel like they're still slightly trapped back here in mid and with that that um dynamo just getting caught out it is not going to be any easier for them especially with that shot going down too and the suck the 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 sloshing machine is not in a good position either yeah waiting our fourth just Ponies, they gotta put out specials in a coordinated fashion. They gotta be pushing with missiles and armor, something like that. They get a pick, this, and or two, that's good too. Those couple picks are gonna let them push up, and there's no checkpoint in the way of them pushing to lead. And they don't need to get through any of that second checkpoint. They can get lead here without much difficulty. They've just gotta pick off the charger, I think, and then they'll. So I think they're just having a hard time moving around when the charger's there, and now they're gonna get pressured out again. They will get a nice pick on the inkjet, which will at least keep them alive. Looks like the charger might have jumped out, so now this is their opening. They're gonna throw a booyah out, and another member of Lane of the Moon almost runs straight into it. Now Safra's getting a good position. Gets to pick on Lappy, that's gonna be critical. Ooh. They're gonna go down to a bomb, but this is their chance. They've got the armor up. They're gonna have to win this fight, but they definitely can. And now, but Air Sand's gonna go down. Looks like they got pinched by member of Lima the Moon, and this might just be the set for Lima the Moon if Winning Our Fourth doesn't have something crazy to bring out here. They gotta win this team fight. Yeah, air sign going down really, really unfortunate right there because that role as a tower rider is crucial. And oh, the dynamo going down, the machines down as well. Alex is not having a good time. That, I mean, the junior is just sitting on that tower right now. Radish, yeah, I mean, you can see them. There's so much ink. The, the machine's gonna get go down, drop down, try and make their way over to the tower. But unfortunately, they do get taken out. Waiting on our fourth, not able to reach the tower. And that is going to be the set. Yes. Again, I think this goes back to E-Leader, special mods consistently hitting their shots. And not even with, even if they're not hitting every shot, the paint. And it's just so hard for the other team to move, especially when you've got a junior and then a K shot that are painting really well and then slayers that are playing really aggressively. It's a very difficult situation to counter. Honestly, I hate to say it, but that would have been the, if you've got two missile weapons, that would have been the time to just run like double missiles, armor, booyah or something and try to counter your opponent's space control, making them run around all the time. Sometimes you just gotta target the back line, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, yeah, it's just really hard to adapt to some, some sometimes it's hard to adapt to those kinds of comps, but they, I mean, they did not go down without a fight. Those were not terribly decisive matches. They were just, sometimes it, it just happens like that, you know, it's the game. But that was still a good set, and that is actually going to do it for us as a compare. But there, uh, there is a lot more Minnow Cup to come. We are going to be handing off the mic to Nox and Devi after this block. They are both great commentators, so please stick around to hear them. Um, before we go, Quark, where can the wonderful people in the audience find you on the internet? I can be found at Strange Quark on Twitter. I don't really tweet much. I just retweet art for the most part, so feel free to give me a follow and see me retweeting art. Yeah. Yeah, and you can find me at Cater underscore, where I talk about art, I do commissions, and I talk about the stuff that I commentate in the future. So yeah, with that, that's going to do it for us. But again, that's not doing it for the rest of the tournament. Please stick around. Thank you for listening to us, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes with the next round of Top Cut.
All right, everybody, and welcome back! Pause my pop gun impression. Anywho, I'm Debbie, I'm back on the mic here, and I am joined by Nox. Hello, Nox. Hi, very <laughs> excited to be commentating Essence vs. Ocean 7 here. <laughs> Very good pop gun impression, but I, I have to try to emphasize that back. So <laughs> we'll see. I'll, I'll let chat rate that as they want. But yes, <laughs> Essence versus Ocean Seven here in the in the semifinals. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Always exciting to get to the semifinals of the tournament, especially in one that's like as popular as Minnow Cup. And here we're going into Sturgeon Shipyard Tower Control. A very quick move in. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. And we've been seeing dynamos all day. This uh, tournament's been definitely showcasing them. And we see Pixel here bringing out a dynamo themselves and they're going to be fighting a splat charger and a squeezer in return. Um, definitely I can see how the comps follow to, follow to work with each other, especially like the dynamo and try here. That's going to be such bridge mm -hmm. control That's a lot if of they chip. can get there. And the chip that's going to come between those two weapons and the 96 gal, if they manage to get it set up correctly, is going to be really, really cool. Oh, yes, absolutely. And also, we see always fun down. to see a splatter scope come out. Oh, yes, the splatter scope. With the, the chargers here coming out as well, um, showcasing what they can do here. I know we saw a double uh, back earlier, but this one is the scope charger. So we see Pixel here throwing that Booyah Bomb, trying to zone out the charger, but the charger does back up and Ray. So the Booyah Bomb doesn't find anyone there. Uh, and the ray still covering up. It looks like the the ray plus help did get two picks on the side of Ocean Seven, and it looks like uh, Tower was trying to get break that last checkpoint. Pixel here trying to fight off someone back in mid, trying to save the teammates jump, but unfortunately could not, and now has to back up because the charger is getting into play here. Mm -hmm. And that try getting a very good pick there on that end sap, lim reducing the amount of armor that can come out. We see bubbles going into pit here. Very nice bubble for spacing here, but there were specials going to counter. It looks like one did go down on top. Another one in pit does follow up. So just can't get up to the top. It looks like lead is about to be retaken and the checkpoint is probably going to break here, which it did. Uh, however, shot here, gonna try and clear this snipe, trying to back one down, but looks like uh, Ichiko does manage to escape. But the one on snipe does get picked out by that 96. So good job on the 96 We're for reacting to that. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a very strong hold of mi in mid here from Essence, really just maintaining the space control and not allowing Ocean 7 to move back in, really allowing them to dominate this map for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Booyah Bomb coming in, just successful defense uh, at this point here, but there's still someone in mid here. Uh, what Ocean 7 has to do is just get the everything back into play, but it looks like the Dynamo got picked off somewhere along the line. So Essence looking really good here in keeping this mid. It's still kind of in a neutral state. Bubbles here, specials coming out just to keep Ocean 7 back. So maybe they can put the tower back in the corner. It looks like two are spotted up on Snipe here. K-Shot looking to see if they can get a pick, but there's missiles and two other firing it. That K-Shot is going down. On the other hand, by doing that, they did pressure Ocean 7 into using missiles at a very inopportune time, really reducing their ability to push there. Splatter scope in an interesting position as this K-Shot from Ocean 7 tries to pull something off. K-Shot in a sharking position just has to wait. Pixel here forced to jump out, but doesn't make it as uh, the shot comes in and helps follow up. Essence here looking really strong and Ocean 7 just having a hard time getting into position to let the, those weapons with the fall off do their work. So unfortunately, the underneath the snipe wasn't painted, and the shark and K shot able to pick off the tri slasher before they could even do much. We are just seeing such good spacing here out of Essence. They're really not allowing Ocean Seven to do too much to them, rel relying on the fact that a lot of their weapons just have a bit more range. And if they don't, they have a lot more spacing ability with those sub weapons. Uh oh. <laughs> That's always unfortunate. To yes, see. the booyah bomb coming up, and then the spinner just takes away your landing. So gotta know the timing of the animal. spinner. It's the same every time. Mm -hmm, absolutely, but I know even I we all forget that. But it was a good timing booyah bomb because two were trying to approach mid, even though. Um, the dynamo did go down. The push is still going here. Valorock just going to dance on the tower here, is going to get the lead for their team. And uh, three do go down on the side of Ocean 7, but lead has been reclaimed. Now with a minute left to go in this game, they have to make sure that they have their specials uh, timed and getting ready for a counter that Essence is probably going to throw at them. 
absolutely. We see Snoo here over on right, just building up this armor. Probably gonna hold it for missiles, trying to get more and more specials out for this push. Bubbles coming out kind of early from the squeezer, causing an early armor to be popped. As, it, as they're putting a lot of pressure on this tri slasher on left, leaving right kind of exposed though, as their squeezer is already down. It's getting to the point where Essence is very close to reclaiming, but it looks like two got picked off. Those were huge. One more's trying to come in behind, but the dynamo comes in and whacks it off the tower as uh, it is the power's being mid. But it this is, is just Splatoon. <laughs> but it is Splatoon. There's 30 seconds left. Anything can still happen. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Charger really just great pick there from the 96. Just really a couple crucial points. play. Good, the cancel. But a good cancel there. Absolutely good cancel as the tower is still being aggressively pushed because offense can be your best defense and that is Absolutely. what Ocean 7 is doing here right now. They're going to keep the mid control. They realize they have, where Essence they is. They have that Booyah Bomb ready to just end the game. They do. Just, who needs GG Ray when you can have GG Booyah? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, here comes the splashdown and the booyah. That tower is as good as Ocean 7's, and that will seal the deal. What a great opening game of semifinals. Oh, absolutely. And uh, just <laughs> the the difference by, uh, by uh, a point. close to one there. Yeah, <laughs> a point difference. Like, it, gosh, uh, even the first uh, few sets that I was on commentating earlier, so many, like, ties to one point. It's been absolutely it's fantastic. And I even called it like before the tournament that these are the things that we love to see and it's been happening consistently. And <laughs> even when uh, when uh, Cork and Cater were on, there was the there was a set, the, what is it? The, the Aquatic Vanguard set with the one point. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's happening everywhere. And these are the things we like to see. Absolutely. It's always so fun to see close back and forth steps, sets. Uh. Next up, we've got Skipper Pavilion TC, which is a map Whoa! we don't see in Pop very often. And I'll be very excited to see what comes out of there. Mm -hmm. This is a map where once you the, where the tower path goes, it goes into an incredibly tight space. Like that little downstairs platform by the by the garden mm -hmm. snipe is what I want to call it. Is uh, getting the tower up there is where the tight or the space just kind of really decreases compared to where it first starts. And this is where your booyah bombs, your rays, um, bomb rushes, all of those uh, missiles, specials, really any special coordination that you can put there is really hard to dodge if you get them in the Absolutely. right corner. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I would be interested in seeing an E-Leader maybe come out on this stage just because they have some very unique shots they can make on it. Oh, absolutely. I've seen E-Leaders thrive on this stage and I know it's definitely <laughs> yeah. one thing to to watch out for, but uh, yes. nothing plays like normal on this map. Like you can expect them to take certain spots. So if they've got, say, a, like a long range weapon, like an E-Leader, you can traditionally find them down below or in mid i know a lot of them will like to take the midpoint area mm -hmm. and just Absolutely. They, and they can just hit halfway across those two platforms and just go pew you're gone and have the front lines push them into the leader shots and here we go we are moving into tc skipper with a, a squiffer coming squiffer. out <laughs> and the spider scope from the other side they totally did that for the rhyme. I'm kidding. Anywho, uh, <laughs> uh, we see the Squiffer coming out and the Charger still staying, but Mini Splatling is arriving for Ocean 7. So the Mini will add some good extra range. It's got the missiles and uh, it can definitely help control really any other, uh, any point of the game here. And I can see the Mini working really well in a pair with the 96. However, the 96 is going up to mid to try to take a fight. And this K-Shot just getting directly in behind. Will it take down the two? It does. This is a quick opening. Uh, three splats uh, for Essence to yeah. take an advantage of. I will point out an interesting thing here with Essence Comp, but it's going to be a nightmare for that splatter scope. Is that double armor? Both Squiffer and Zap are very quick armor weapons. Absolutely, and I th and I wonder if that could also be why, like the Squiff for the extra range and just to match up with the sniper. But yes, the the double armor is going to give that charger a hard time. And I don't know what happened. Is, three down again on it the side of Ocean Seven. It was a wipe, and I huh? didn't see how they got wiped. Uh, but You're Essence just top. being dominant really? here. Essence getting a great trade with that tri slasher, allowing them to just maintain the space as they are just leaving Ocean 7 stuck on respawn constantly. Squiffer doing a great job applying pressure. Great, great collateral from that charger there, but this might not be the end of the push depending on what this squeezer can manage to pull off. A oh, great this... pick there. 
a great double. They can keep this push going. This they push really, is not dead yet. It's not dead yet. And with Squeezer being able to do the two different shots, having bubbles at the ready, this is huge. Gets the two another double. That this is the squeezer. Great push out of the squeezer. <laughs> this squeezer is just picking off the members of Ocean Seven one by one, but now does have to retreat. Uh, which that is they a did, push they, they all get the way picked. 100 to six out of uh, essence. An awesome opening push from them. We are seeing the splatter scope getting this ray ready. They have armor, they have splashdown, they are almost missiles. They can make a big pitch out of this if they wait out these missiles. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, that Ocean 7 will have to watch out now is that the, the K-Shot has been able to kind of sneak behind them a couple times. So as long as they catch out the K-Shot uh, and the way it is sharking, I think they'll be able to pull off something good. But however, we did see a, there was a flank happening. I think the 96 was trying to pull off a flank on the plat there. And I know the camera changed. Some interesting flank. The ship sure. did go down after that. So I think the flank did pull off successful. Uh, and it looks like Ocean 7 now, they did pop the missiles. They're going to try to move up here. We see the 96 throwing the wall, trying to get in the way. And oh, the wall actually ended up great positioning out of the mini here. They're able to just do apply so much pressure from this position along with being able to paint pretty safely and retreat if they need to. And I mentioned earlier that the 96 and the mini can make a good combo pair. And even though the mini came up a little bit before uh, the, that trade did happen, the follow-up just from the mini alone did help put a little bit extra pressure, even though they did go down. Absolutely. And we are seeing the Squiffer here just getting ready to hit the important shots in case their teammates go down. They're getting close to that armor. Just really being able to apply a lot of pressure to this specific point that isn't a checkpoint, but really might as well be, if we're being honest. Yep, going up a wall is just as much as a checkpoint. And a nice pick by the Squiffer there and did try to get the jump shots, but just Mini here adapting to it, just getting underneath the shot so the Squiff could not take them down. But it looks like uh, the Mini's still trying to be aggressive here and going to try and work with the 96, but two go down. I'm not too sure where mini the Mini is still went. up over on yep. right, though. Not there anymore. <laughs> and the Slaughter Scope forced to jump out to preserve that ray, something that's so useful for them getting both back in and playing defensively in this comp. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we saw two uh, members of Ocean 7. They're getting ready to defend on the bottom while this... Uh, um, there's a, an attempt made to try to go be a distraction in mid here. As soon as armor pushed, you could see they did go forward. So it looks like Essence here has the bubbles out. and uh, But one did go down. It looks like the squeezer got picked before the bubbles could get popped. Yes. It it gave it a pick. Here's the thing. They have pushed this tower very far back into Ocean 7's side again, allowing them a lot of space to recoup and recover, even with so many of them going down. And there's still only a minute left for Ocean 7 to try and get past that wall. And, Ocean, and Essence has been doing such a great job holding that spot. Yeah, they've been coming around with a couple different angles and pinching really well. Uh, and we see that Ocean 7 did try to do that now towards the middle of the game to match what Essence is doing. Now there's one up above here. The missiles come out spotted. This is going to get something down here. It looks like a pick did happen with those missiles. K-Shot coming in behind. Gonna pinch this try slash Great The mini's still underneath. Oh, absolutely. And Ocean 7 is down three with, only, with less than 30 seconds left to go. And they only have that, a Stingray. You know, yeah. They, I will say this in Essence is in Ocean 7's favor. At least Essence doesn't have an instant get off the tower special for the end of the game. That is true. However, they do have uh, the bombs and the bubbles if they can uh, and build those up in time. Yep. So they ha they have a lot of spacing uh, with the comp, but they do pick off the Squiffer here. That's one armor down, but the Squeezer is alive with bubbles. There they are around the tower, but the bubbles don't land anybody. And we see the try trying to take There's something the up. The last. The last bubble saved for the best for last, right? Ab absolutely. That's Here's that's what that Squeezer tower. players do best. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> two stall out for a bit and then throw the last. That's where people actually have to call out. Okay, two bubbles have been gone out. Where's the third? It comes really up behind the team player player there out of Essence. Oh, Just yeah. great team great pressure applied together. Nobody was trying to make like insane hero plays. They were just all playing off of each other really well. Absolutely. The squeezer like, did was... get that really cool <laughs> squad, though. Yes, that uh, that moment that the squeezer had, still keeping the push alive and stalling out Ocean Seven from uh, even taking a potential advantage against against what they had uh, got. So the squeezer just able to use the kit and stall it there as they could, and even towards the end, like it, it, as long as the team's there and together and has like those specials that they can counter with. You don't need a GG special to seal the deal. You just nope. have to have the team's coordination to seal the deal. And that is Absolutely. what they did there. What are your thoughts on Starfish main stage tower? Because I know <laughs> how I have some friends who play Splatling that happen to think about it a decent bit. Uh, what's a backline? 
<laughs> is it? Uh, this, I, every time when this stage comes up, I even said it earlier on mic, is that, and I say it every time when it comes up, this is anyone can flank on main stage, no matter what you are, whether you're fast, exactly. whether you're slow, anyone can do it. So there's no traditional spot that is fully taken. Like, like just because I know backline, of course, off the top of my head, <laughs> Hydra Flare. <laughs> The three main spots are like mid, snipe, and like the other team's snipe or bats if Absolutely. you can get up that far. But have you ever considered the wings? I um, have considered right side wing with slow. Yes, specifically, but, actually. And I find that some that aren't fully comfortable with the weapon don't prefer to take the wings. They'll prefer to just take that kind of like straight line and those dominant three points. Um, but if you can get comfortable in taking a wing, with uh, splatlings especially like i even see chargers do this they'll get their charge ready and do a peek whether it's scope or a jump shot they love mm -hmm. to take that right peek on the right side flank uh putting range like, on, on that right side, side flank is just so powerful it it's is like what are you supposed to do to contest that if they hit their shots you can't move them absolutely and people will think it's just like oh, okay the person's just the, like the back line's just over here so just make sure you don't go up too far but what if they're the one pinching in on the aggressive side? What if, what if they're choosing to be the problem on purpose? Absolutely. And we have seen the the Charger and the Swift come out here. So it'll be interesting to see if we see the, the Charger continue, which uh, my guess is that the be, Charger will stay. I, yeah, I would also be interested in seeing if that Dynamo comes back out on this stage because there are a lot of That's great true. high vantage points for them. That's true. Dynamo does have some pretty good leverage on this stage, especially when it comes to street control and adding mm -hmm. a lot of pressure up to the bats. Like if if uh, if a wipe happens and they're pushing through the street after first checkpoint's broken, if you can take a frontliner and get your Dynamo up on the top left, by all means, that's nasty. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll see a swatling out of either of these two teams just based off of the comps we've seen, but it is such a neat map for it. I do love to see the Chargers come out though, because I know- It is so um, cool to see the Chargers. They are so forgotten in this team. Oh, absolutely. Like I still love seeing the Chargers come back out and showing what they can do. And in this case, and we, we don't see the Dynamo come back. Yes, opting for the Flingza, still using kind of the roller power uh, that they can do to help get the advantages on this map. Um, I still like to see that this 96 deco is still coming out because you don't mm -hmm. see the 96 deco so often, but they absolutely. have the wall that's flashed down and we it can see. Up yes, absolutely. And we are seeing missiles already coming out here on the side of Essence, applying a lot of pressure. Really going to be able to call out those flanks that it seemed like Ocean 7 was trying to set up. And it looks like one flank was being attempted there. It looks like Flare does see the one up on top of the attic, but it just does not have the range to hit it. And two go down on the side of Ocean 7. With the try here, trying to make something happen, push people and back. And a great they pick from that charger, them. saving those at player, allowing them to get that armor a bit faster, allowing them to maintain this mid control. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That is one of the things where you kind of want to bait the person into your charger's line of fire, and that is what happened there. The zap played back into where the charger could reach. The charger uh, managed to get that pick and save their teammate. Squeezer is down again, but, but seems to have traded that flingsa. Zap over here, riding this tower, maintaining a lot of pressure, watching out from that 96 scout. Power. It looks like the wall's in the choke. The try, when that tries on snipe, that tower isn't going to get past checkpoint unless if you have something that can bomb it off. So the try doing Absolutely. a really good job there at defense. And it looks like now Essence has to look the way for a way around. But this 96 here trying to push up to get the charger off snipe. But the squeezer says, no, you're going to back up now. However, the 96 wins! <laughs> the 96 got some great R jumping RNG there, something they we don't really see very it. often. <laughs> But however, that is a wipe on the side of Essence and Ocean 7 now has the opportunity to move up and we see the 96 already taking the press on bot. And they already have double missiles able to come out here, able to apply a ton of pressure, really gonna annoy that Charger player, to be honest. Hard for them to keep their position with all those. Even if it does displace them a little bit, uh, it still won't keep them completely out of play because it doesn't take overly too long for them to charge. So even though it'll displace them and you'll know where they are, you have to remember that they're still going to be relatively in that area, unless if you have a second thing like a splat bomb to cover nice out their way there from the charger, really coming in to oh, save absolutely. that tower. Three they down. Don't quite now. prevent the checkpoint though, and that's a hard checkpoint to get to on this map, especially when the other team has a tri slosher. Mm -hmm. The uh... With the, with the Ocean 7 and getting that far is definitely a good push for them. And uh, now they have to 
um, what is it, Essence has to get through this more aggro comp. Oh, the bubbles coming in and getting through kind of like the wall on the side there, but it's just in kind fact, of splat for splat fall. happening. Yeah, absolutely. K-Shot versus K-Shot here we're seeing with the Charger applying a lot of pressure to K-Shot managing to get a pick on the Zap. Charger getting a great pick as they missile. Incredible shot there from the Charger. They need to get this checkpoint though while they still have the chance. There they go. No, but they a might... bomb stops it. I think they finished the check. Did they finish the check? They finished the check. They finished the check, but still the bomb did stop That's, the tower, however. It did, it did, but that going. was such an important checkpoint to finish getting through there because if they had waited another half second, they would have had to restart that checkpoint just about all over. Ocean 7 here, Flare jumping into a full-on 1v4, and the rest of Ocean 7 wasn't in in time to stop that, and this is going to be lead for Essence. This is going to be a huge push out of Essence. They might be able to make it through the next check with these missiles coming out here, almost to Bubble, almost to Ray. Armor's already come out, so they're pretty far from that again, but it's a zap that doesn't take that long for them to get it. Bubble's coming out on from top above. that's Weezer. Roller and Slusher from above. That is the oh, tag team of fall-off damage you want to do to defend that tower. It's Absolutely, not over yet. Good. It's not over yet, but what a great push out of Essence. Really good job capitalizing off of uh, Ocean 7, going in a little bit too early, not waiting for their specials enough and not moving in together. Oh yeah, absolutely. It took it. It was a little staggered there, but again, it came down to the, finally the tag team coming up and stopping. And now it looks like they're trying to go in again. Flair trying to pull something off here on the one side is going to try and see if they can win against this uh, other shot here. As we have the shot one v one, but uh, and a great, just <laughs> and a great play there from Essence's K shot. The mechanics <laughs> taking up the high ground and jumping down. That is that was definitely good movement from that other. Absolutely. Always important to remember when greats are in play, you should take full advantage of them. Mm -hmm. it, it was if Great the... Great slash pound cancel there out of the zap. <laughs> Something you don't get to do super often as a zap or junior player, but it's that always fun the, to see. That is the second one I've seen today for a zap doing a splash down cancels, and they are coming in yes. handy for these teams here. But now we've got counters going out as kind of neutral play in mid. 20 seconds left to go, and uh, Ocean 7 needs to try to get control of this tower path. But I say this, and they are basically wiped with the last 10 to seconds to go with a charger with Ray on the other side, which while it's not what it once was, is still, is still a hard thing to try and push past. <laughs> the bu the, the Ray's not even gonna come into play. <laughs> oh, the bubbles there just sealing the deal. And we watch the Zap just kind of standing and run around. And I'm just like, are they calling for a picture? What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> they might've been calling for a picture. <laughs> they had the time. They <laughs> did. Really but, um... Essence doing a really good job of realizing when Ocean 7 was overextending there, there on that push and Ocean 7 admittedly not doing a great job playing off of each other for that one push and it shows that just one mistake can cost you a game in Splatoon just like it, that. It really can and uh, it always happens like just underneath the halfway uh, point where something like that does happen where a slip up will happen it'll be like they're getting close and panic sets in and I think that happened for Ocean 7. So. It seemed like it because they all started coming in just one at a time, and it's such a heartbreaking thing to see. You never want to see it happen. It was. It's just, <laughs> and we know because you hear it going down, and someone's probably calling out in VC. Is just like we gotta, stop, stop, we stop, gotta stop, get there. Please. We gotta get there. We gotta stop it. And uh, what is it? I flare as we saw flare. They went in, and it was just if it was just waited a couple seconds, like just throwing just bombs or something like that. Collect the rest of Ocean Seven was just there and behind because after flare went down, the other three. Were were directly behind and uh, unfortunately just uh, was caught out right after that. So just a bit unfortunate moment of a stagger and panic. But however, they did have a good push of their own. The try they absolutely did when they defended and uh, they were able to yeah. secure some areas. And then it was a great game. It just does a great yeah. job showing one mistake can do a lot in Splatoon. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is uh, two, one, for essence and what a uh, great set mm -hmm. and i believe uh that will allow essence to go on to uh grands and it looks like they're going to uh be facing now uh what is it lima lima lemon mm -hmm. that is uh, if i pronounce that wrong i apologize but that is who is going to be in grand finals yes um and I think we're just going to take a brief break while things get set up here, but don't go away because we will be starting real quick here. So grab, grab, drink, stretch, do whatever you need to do. We'll be back right away.
All right, everybody, and welcome back. But before we get into grand finals, we are going to uh, kick it off with a little bit of an advertisement here. We got to promote Little Squid League. Who doesn't like Little Squid League? Uh, Little Squid League is Little Squid League 20. Uh, is happening on the 28th and 29th of May here at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Two-day event is uh, comprised of a starting pool of $500 and the chance for you and your team to become the title holder winners amongst some of the most iconic teams in low level. But remember, sign-ups close on the 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. But if you want more information, head over to the LSL Discord server. This is going to be a big event, and I can tell you, I know Knox and I are going to be there on the mic. <laughs> yes, so you absolutely. guys better be there giving the hype in chat, okay? Always a great <laughs> time with LSL's teams running such creative comps, and just, it's always such a great time. Uh, it'll be definitely something to look for. But anywho, back to finals. Again, uh, attempted my uh, pop gun impression because I know I usually does that for uh, low ink grands often. <laughs> and just that's a signature thing. But anywho, we are to grand finals of Minnow Cup 13 Tower Control Edition. It is Lima Limon, a.k.a. Illumini, basically, uh, <laughs> versus Essence. I'm very excited to see Aces Charger coming out here, something they always pull out. <laughs> Something they've always pulled out. <laughs> so we are potentially seeing the the uh, the charger. Yes, absolutely. I would be very surprised if we don't see a charger come out here, especially well, really on all of these maps. It's rare for Ace to play anything else. Um, <laughs> I'm expecting to see Junior and Zap out of Radish, probably Nautilus or Ballpoint out of J. And it's nice to know, like, you have a lot of familiarity with... Uh, I do. I used to be on the from... I... So, yes, you can definitely say a lot about these people. And I know I've seen them play several times in several <laughs> events. So. They, they, play... they don't miss a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing Popgun ever said about us was, they sure play in everything. And, like, yeah, that was that was what we did. That's... Mm -hmm. It was a good time. It reminds me back, uh, back when uh, Grillers were kind of after like our first year like i would definitely try to get the team in everything we could even if it was two we just pick up two more and just go and just exactly. be as active as possible and i mean simply have a big stance of even if you're low level if it's an open mid-level tournament just, just play. do it <laughs> it's a free scrim it's a free scrim basically and you get so much experience out of it even for events like this when you just go into it, you have some fun, and you learn from it, no matter exactly. like, where you finish. And I know a thing that we've developed from one of a uh, longtime member who hasn't really played with us a lot recently, but uh, Toxic on the Grillers, everything he always says when we go into a tournament is, all right, guys, let's just not get last. And that that's all we that's drive off of. That's my goal every let's time go. in the tournament. One goal. If I'm not in last, it could be worse. And last is always dropping, so... Just survived the tournament. <laughs> and now we're here with these two teams. They are definitely not in last. I can tell you that much. And <laughs> the first game we're just waiting to start up here is going to be on Manta Maria. Now, with the we've talked how we're probably going to potentially see a Charger v. Charger matchup here. This is yes. going to be the prime map where they are going to definitely be playing peekaboo with each other. Absolutely. It's such a great map for it. On the other hand, I will say, I don't think that we will see a heavy splatling come out, but Radish did dabble in it at one point, and this is a great heavy remix map. It, it definitely is, just for any splatling. The E-Leader! Here we go! Love All seeing right. the ghillie suit come out with a junior, by the way. <laughs> Personal favorite there. Oh, um, yes, that's a good thing. And you did, here's the Nautilus as well with the Inkjet. I can see they're probably going to add a lot of pressure on the left-hand side. They are going to add a lot of pressure on the Charger as well. We see the E-Leader taking the far right with the other Charger taking Bunk. Those are some two prime positions for them to be in. Missiles and armor already coming out, and Essence here looking to make the first move as... Uh, uh, Lima Lamon is being backed up and the Nautilus gets picked down first. Yes. I will also I would also like to point out here that this Elier from Asa is running respawn punisher. They are going to have a bad time against that if Asa is moving in and hitting their shots the way they often do. Most E leaders run res respawn Punisher, so they're, they're that confident with themselves that they're going to run RP. And when uh, they get into position, yes, it's something to make note of, especially at the start of the game, that this E leader does have Punisher. And if we get let it get into control, 
that could be a bad time. And we are seeing missiles coming out here from Laffy, applying a lot of pressure to that top left. Ink just uh, keeping that pressure up. Armor's already been used by the junior. They're far away from that again. K-Shot's already down. E-leader positioned in mid. Able to not quite find a pick on that E-leader, but forces them back a little bit. And that is a 3v3 on the side of... 3v2 on the side of Essence. The flank from... Uh... The flank coming out there on Mast really uh, doing good job there, but uh, we see Lappy and Radish, they're working together in the middle, making sure that they will 2v1 this one person and win that fight. It looks like Lappy here is trying to keep people off the bunker. Just, here you go, happy birthday, here's all the missiles <laughs> for you. <laughs> hey, actually, this is my bunker now? Please get out. <laughs> it's my hometown now. Lappy here just go pushing up to get paid, but the Chargers sees and uh, just denies that. Rash that is going two down, down on the side of Limon, Lima Limon. As and the E-leader is going, going, most likely going down here. Yeah, there they go. <laughs> However, good good tower dance by the leader there. Gotta always credit really the tower great dance. tower dance from the leader. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now mid say, control going back into uh, Essence's favor relatively quickly. An early armor out of Essence there. A little bit, yeah. I'd say in a few, like it wasn't, overly that bad because you did see some of the teammates did try to move up with it uh when the armor yeah. was because there was the the squeezer was trying to get up on the top left so the armor was popped to help them out there uh but unfortunately it could not help them survive the survive the stingray <laughs> we are seeing sure. a lot of solo missiles out of both of these k shots which is always surprising to see Mm -hmm. And uh, what is it? The leader did go down from behind. Um, not too sure if there was a flank or anything there, but the, the junior goes down and Essence just uh, coming together as a group. They now see ones up top, just adding a little bit of pressure. But with this two down, they have a chance to re-get control. It looks like this uh, array is active and the K shot is on this bunk. There is a one for one trade here that does happen on the top. The missiles do spot out the others, and we'll see how far this tower can get to. This could be a big push, as a lot of Illuminae doesn't have a lot of stuff to push over that wall with. They do have the bombs, though. Mm -hmm. They are all in a nice place, know, though. You know, you know, meanwhile, uh, Essence is kind of forced to back up a little bit and take a little bit of extra cover here. So uh, Lima Lamont coming in and defending really nicely, getting into a nice place over cover on the elbow because um, Essence didn't really have anything but bombs to potentially throw over and get them out. The bubble on the, there from the squeezer. I will also say this. Essence just did a great job holding down mid and the other incredible bubble near out of the squeezer. Oh my goodness. The single long range fall off shot. <laughs> you know, they had to do it. <laughs> However, this is getting really close. Look at the members of Essence this all going in front to of this tower. It is 100% lead here as there's a lot of good map control forward ahead. The Zap is painting ahead. However, I believe the Charger just Zap picked doing up. doing a great job rotating back to chart, back to the tower, having to jump out. Only eight points left. Might have been worth just trying to see if they could get some sneaky little points in. They get all the way down to five. Zap is back, building that armor already. Charger's probably going to start working on that ray. Zap is alone in mid, so they need to be careful here. Mm -hmm. I think the Zap is aware that they were alone, but still wanted to make sure that they have the turf up, even if they're spotted out, um, just to keep uh, the turf in their control. And that way they can also be a, like a beacon for their teammates to get in because uh, Lima Lamon was still pretty far back at the time. So Absolutely. Nautilus here pushing up, using that inkjet very aggressively, seeing a jump out there from the, from, uh, the charger. Inkjet not quite able to find any picks, but forces a lot of people further back. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Radish was there with a splat bomb nearby one of those inkjet shots and almost pushed the uh, one of the members of Essence into it. So it was a nice attempt of teamwork there for the inkjet shot and the splat bomb. But now we're coming down to the end here and we see the charger on the tower. They're just dancing their way away. It's just... The words! <laughs> shot there out of that charge at the end of that game. What a f an awesome pull movement by Asa there. <laughs> what an incredible try at a final push there out of Lima Limon. I was like, hold on a second, there's two down and it's just up to the charger to try to get something done here. And the charger did manage to do it. And it was just like, whoa, I, you could hear it. I lost my words. I was like, yeah. is Lima Limon going to take this back? And it was very close. It was just the, the dodge was predicted and the charger got a pick there and was able to go in and stop that because it was literally only the scope 
left alive at the very end if you looked at the you very know, top. <laughs> a good charger player can clutch it out when they really, really need to. Oh, but they absolutely. should prefer not to. <laughs> it's just the power of everybody around them comes to them, and it's just like, I shall thrive! And there's the snipe, and voila. <laughs> I remember back when uh, Charger was way bigger, just watching Chargers in big tournaments in like finals just have to hit triples and they do oh, it. Oh my God, yep. it was stressful for everyone. <laughs> they just they just feel the power being absorbed into their soul and, and it all comes out in a single shot. <laughs> and next we've got a humpback pump track, a map that we don't often see in tournaments for tower control, but a map I actually like for it. Yeah, um, we'll see. We see a lot of those in this one because, of course, it's just TC. So we're going to see absolutely. a lot of the non-traditional tower modes, uh, tower maps um, come into play here. So yes, Humpback is one of them, and uh, this is where we definitely saw the dynamos from before uh, thrive. Mm -hmm. But if the Chargers do come back, we're going to see them take a lot love, of presence. On the I would there. love to see the orange squiffer come out here. I think that it's a very <laughs> unique pick, and I think it can do really well on this map. Sadly, However, we're not seeing it. We've got the uh, the mirror charger going on here. Meanwhile, relatively similar comps from both sides, but we just see yes. Asa changing to the splatter scope. And the side. junior is already down. No early armor there for Lima Limon. Picked off by the other charger, but the squeezer is the next to go down. Um, so one for one. We are seeing armor through. missiles out, applying mm -hmm. a ton of pressure to Lima Limon. Absolutely. So Essence here again, looking for that burst start that they've been able to succeed, push off right away. But however, this it's not happening in their favor this time, just because of the junior going down early. Mm -hmm. or, or not the junior, it was the squeezer that squeezer. went down early. We are not seeing the... a lot of very neutral play here in this first minute of this game. Taking control of mid here is definitely difficult because, of course, it is uneven ground, unlike Manta. So, Charger there getting another nice Great pick from Asa. The corner. <laughs> Absolutely. So, two down on the side of Lima Limon, though. Meanwhile, the Zap is down on This might side. be a big push out of Essence if they play it right. I don't think so because they do have a Charger in the way. And they did they pick off the Squeezer. <laughs> Again. <laughs> This map does have such unique shots that chargers can just absolutely destroy with. Um, mm -hmm. I know when I was a more casual player and played Charger more, this was one of my favorite maps for it, which is a hot take, admittedly. <laughs> yeah, you can never underestimate them because there's a lot of different corners to peek, and as soon as you poke your head out, it's almost like whack-a-mole. Uh, yes, you get absolutely. Whack. Uh, in and this case, now, Charger Asa trying out. to whack him all the other Charger. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But the Stingray coming out and uh, Radish here doing a j good job making sure mid has paint support for well, the Charger. You have gone However, down. You have gone down indeed. So Essence here does have some missiles out, forcing the last players of Lima Limon to move around, allowing them to start hopefully getting past this first checkpoint. They, at this point in the game, you really want to start getting some forward movement. Bubbles coming out really enabling that. K-Shot keeping an eye on this Charger here and not keeping an eye on this Charger and Nautilus does unfortunately get picked off for it, though. I, I've noticed that during this game, the Squeezer is really struggling on this game. Um, the Squeezer's getting picked off in their special. They're getting picked off by the Charger over the corners. Uh, the Squeezer's having a hard time getting enabled, and I know uh, Essence is has used the Squeezer to really get a lot of their pushes off big time. But Absolutely. Lima Lamon just giving it a hard time this game and uh, being able to add this extra pressure. However, Essence does have the initial lead push. They mm -hmm. do have the pick on the not zap trade here. And now and that is a uh, two, two for two. Squeezer and we are seeing the nice squeezer trying to make something happen here in mid and getting a flank off, managing to get the charger a huge pick. It does go down to the Nautilus, but that getting Asa down allows so much more mobility for them on this map, even with the Nautilus still out as Nautilus does have a bit of a difficult time with the terrain, and they keep being doing a really good job of isolating the Nautilus and not allowing them to have a ton of paint by them. Mm -hmm. The Nautilus has its uh, fun moments in the more flat areas, or if they can just jump peek the sides more. But with the paint that uh, Essence is able to put out, and of course having their own charger in play, um, uh, will help the Nautilus get around a little more. But that's and three down the charger now. going down. This leaves a ton, a ton of space for Essence to really be able to capitalize on, but not be, and we are seeing Bubbles come out, just letting them take full control of this plot. Stingray coming out, oh. suddenly the Squeezer does go down again, but they might get through this checkpoint if they play it right. It is very close. I don't think they have anything really contesting it right now because the knot was in the corner, but very nice uh, side shot there to help get that 2v1 down. Essence here going really strong. They just got Asa down. There's two in front of the tower, really but there is a lot of from the zap. 
great choice from Mazap trying to push that junior, although they are going to probably go down for it, but it allows their teammates to regain more control as they come back in. Just and that is remember, a push all the way to oh, that that is a that is game to essence. That is wipe. At the very end, you could see the panic set in as one tried to just get on the tower just to stop any more points from going instead of staying back, bombing, or just adding a little bit of extra follow from the fo from before. And of course, like with the junior there, they don't have a lot of range to do that. So mm -hmm. taking the time to throw the bomb makes it difficult. So they have to try to rush in. But um, wow, just uh, making great utilization of their specials there to fully just take up space once they saw the opening. Absolutely. Just uh, found that one way in. They kept the charger under control and uh, the squeezer was able to actually get uh, a playoff that they were hoping to get off. And they got those picks on the tower. Uh, it was very close that uh, the junior almost even got a pick on the charger at the end. But with some help, they uh, the junior got picked off as well on the tower and just was able to get the essence, was able to get the wipe. Mm -hmm. And next up, we are seeing TC Ancho which always is, I know it's a lot of people's favorites. It's a very well This balanced. is a classic. This is, a, is a classic. classic. I remember watching FT win, win back on this map back in the day quite a bit. There's I mean, still obviously, but it's like the first thing I really remember of them. That final checkpoint. It's so such many an event. things happen on that final checkpoint. And there are so many key moments from, uh, and clips from many different uh, events that happened <laughs> there. Oh my goodness. I would not be surprised to see the E-Leader come back out for this map from Asa. E-Leader can be pretty strong here, indeed. Uh, but it's just going to see, are they going to opt for Stingray to just keep more control? Or are they going to keep the leader for the end of Rain? Uh, because Rain can also do really well uh, on pushes or just keeping or spacing people out of mid, adding that little extra poke for your front lines to go in. Um, and if we didn't yeah. see a Slosher on Humpback, we're not going to see a Slosher come out from anyone. No. Nope. Nope, the only thing we've seen change is the is the E leader. And, and I, we we're I didn't back guess that there. right. <laughs> yep. Going back uh to um the E leader here with respawn punishers, so the E leader will have a lot of uh, zoning pressure here. We see uh it looks like the shots going for missiles. Yes, the thing to notice we're opening up here is that that shot is running come back something ooh, rough oh, on the E leader. Leader trying yeah. to go in aggressive really early. But that shot is running comeback instead of LDE, which means that they're probably favoring a way more aggressive K-Shot than a lot of the scene is right now. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that is three down on Illumini, which is oh. sad to see. And we are seeing the Squeezer pushing up here, getting some great picks. They have bubbles ready. They're just going to come under this flat and bubble it, which will is always effective. It, even if it doesn't get picks, it prevents There's them from going bubble. over to that fan path. Squeezer here now has to back up as shots were coming down, bombs, missiles, uh, just trying to control out of the way. So the armor comes out now, but the Squeezer can get re-enabled. The teammates are all nearby. And that is and missile armor on her essence. It is. And uh, lots of specials and paint coming back in towards the tower. Two members of essence are finally down. As, uh, Lappy's trying to push the Squeezer back, but not to, not to all else uh, avails there as the Squeezer was still applying a lot of pressure because there wasn't a lot of paint by Lappy's feet. So that was actually a really close 1v1. Yes, it was. We are seeing the Nautilus trying to get up on that fan, not quite able to do it right now. Asa looking for a shot, not quite able to find it and getting raid out by the Charger, forcing them into a very inopportune position. Although they do manage to lay down a mine for Radish to try and use. Mm -hmm. That ray just kind of was out there and actually pushed two members into the one that dropped and I was actually very afraid for the two members of uh, yes. Lima Lamon there. I thought they were going to get doubled by that uh, Ooh, potential good shot from the Charger. It seems That's like weird. Lima yeah. Limon is just having a rough time getting any foothold since Ace went down so early in that first in opening. Mm -hmm. But it's however, Ace making making up for it here now they really have to make sure they regroup just kind of shake off what happened earlier 41 is by no means an unbeatable push on this map to be fair oh it, no this map is a ko map it it truly is and uh now with uh, lima lomo and getting control just have to make sure yeah, that they keep an eye on both sides a bit of an early specials but it makes sense they're probably a little bit uh scattered right now after like their mental state has to be a little bit rough after losing the first two games like that and especially with what happened on humpback Oh, Lappy trying to go in, but does get 2v1 themselves. Jay has to back up a bit, but the Squeezer's landing their shots first. Does pick off the Nautilus, and that's two down on the side of uh, Lima Limon, and they couldn't really get too far into that street area. But they do still have two minutes left to try and make this happen. 
<laughs> I love the, the has use of this. Up. I love the use of the squeezer's range. Like they're actually seeing like how far the e-leader can uh, can reach can at where it's at, and just just going right on the edge. So if they go back any farther, they're gonna go down. Absolutely. They're doing a great job poking. Although it looks like Lean Malumon is going to get through this checkpoint really good chase for applying a ton of pressure to that top area. That is unfortunate, though. Mm -hmm. It looks like one came in from behind on Essence, and we didn't quite see it, but there was a this way on tower, which I'm pretty sure was signaling that there was a flank. Someone Absolutely. had to have been behind the tower, and that pinch came in so well for them. <laughs> but Illumini now no longer has a checkpoint, to, not Illumini, Lima Limon has no, long, no longer has a checkpoint to, to try and get through to get leave. This is way more doable for them now. It's way more open. There is only a minute 30 left, though. Mm, absolutely. It, they can definitely come back from this. They had a strong showing on that last push there, so they just have to make sure that they can catch these members out. Bubbles here looking to try to get that Nautilus, but does fail. I think there's one more bubble. There is, but they still survive. But however, the Squeezer ends up winning the Squeezer two. just clutching it out <laughs> using a great... Everyone talks about the Squeezer's bubbles, but you can't forget that the main weapon itself is just good. The, the main weapon is just as good. Just the movement and everything there. Ending up winning that 1v2 is huge. So they're now adding allowing them to get through that checkpoint with only a minute left. Missiles coming out. They're able to really just maintain space right now, allowing them to take a ton of control. <clears throat> the, it looks like two members are finally down. Now armor saving the K-Shot's life here. And uh, <laughs> now it looks like the Turk control is going to be in the way. There is only like 30 seconds left in this game. Missiles are coming out It'll to spot out well. where oh, Essence is. The junior does go down though with armor ready. That is unfortunate to see. That is a big unfortunate. Not as down. This is, K-Shot's gonna have to try and make something happen here, but they're gonna have to do it through Ray, which is very rough. They do go down to that section bomb. The bomb was just in behind, and I'm pretty sure it was just missed. Essence here now, of course, using offense to their best defense, and the squeezer wrong here with it. does have bubbles at the ready. The rain does come out to try to poke. It does shred the armor. The 2v1 does happen. It, the E-leader is down, but the squeezer is there right in front of the three. And uh, oh, that, uh, that is... Uh, that is that the is tournament. Congrats. Yeah. Good, really just incredible special use in gameplay out of Essence, capitalizing on those open spaces so well. Oh yeah, no, definitely strong performance by both teams. Like, it was really close there. Lima Luan had that strong push there, mm -hmm. where they had the E-leader down, they had, uh, or not the E-leader, the, the Charger down, and uh, were able to move up quite far, and then just that one flank from behind. Uh, it's a map that you always have to be push. so careful of that with. Absolutely, and uh, my goodness, they had it there, but Essence called it out and had that flank at the ready uh, in a good time so that that push couldn't go uh, much farther. Absolutely. Really great play out of both teams. Awesome to see Chargers coming out from both sides. Felt mm -hmm. like a blast through the past a little bit on that. We've seen uh, the Rapid Pros come back today. Um, just so many different weapons coming back and showing what they can do and how they are still dominant in uh, some of the competitive play. Um, Absolutely. I think, I think the game is a little more balanced right now than people really give it credit for. <laughs> <laughs> we at Part least the show in pickups and in teams, which is it one is. of the things it that is. low level really thrives at is giving teams the opportunity to shine still since mid level's just not really doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the game more interesting, more fun playing. Absolutely. We like the play uh, instead of just going on to these other weapons that are just consistently seen. I mean, yes, if there's like if, if that's what you enjoy doing, it's fantastic. Like you you enjoy playing the game. Glad, but you just glad you enjoy playing Zap. Cool to yes. see other things though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but seeing these seeing these comps come out, love to see it. We saw Absolutely. the charger fights, we saw the dynamo one v ones. We saw um, teammates just playing so well off of each other and knowing how to play around yes. each other because we know each other. The teamwork displayed today was also really well uh, shown. Like the the two v ones as well, where one v one would happen, and I imagine in VC there was a call out and uh, just just collapsed on that uh, 1v1. The stream caught so many of those moments and it's fantastic to see all these things come into play. Absolutely, it's always incredible to just see good team play. That's that's all you really want to see out of Splatoon. <laughs> of course, but with that is that Essence is your are your champions for Minnow Cup 13 Tower Control Edition. And uh, that means we will be signing off. 
Nox, where can uh, where can the people at home find you? They can find me at Twitter uh, at under at NoxRaven42, and they can find me at Twitch at, once again NoxRaven42. A little predictable. <laughs> and where can they find you? Uh, basically, same places, except I have a little addition of an underscore on my Twitch. So we got Debbie underscore Doovy on Twitch. Uh, with, of course, I like to showcase uh, what the Hydra can do in in this uh, these meta days in mid level. So, including the vanilla. I do not I leave my I variant out. I give the vanilla some love. Anywho, and uh, on on Twitch for or on on Twitter. Sorry, I already said Twitch. I did it backwards today for some reason. Twitter, Devi Dewey, you, you got the you got all that uh, kind of stuff. Also, big thank you for the staff, the TOs, for doing all the hard work behind the scenes and putting this all together for all you. And of course, Jub behind the scenes on stream here, uh, making sure that you guys have a broadcast to see. So. Thanks to all of them. As always, thank Jeb for making everything look so incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. But uh, thanks again for also all the support for everyone in chat, hyping up all the two teams. And yeah, that will be it. Until the next Minnow Cup, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>